Hello everyone, welcome to another Tinfoil Tuesday stream! How's everyone doing? I hope you're having a wonderful Tuesday. Happy birthday again to the Profane Priestess who um, gave some suggestions for this stream in terms of theming. So thank you for that, Profane Priestess. Let's see what else is going on in chat. Um, <laughs> Halloween Town, thanks for a 15 stream streak. What's 8 times 14? 112. I had to Google that. Um... What else? Altered Undying with 40 bits says, I had a fantastic birthday. Me and my friends dress up in 1920s outfits and had a blast. I also sent you a PM on Discord that's an interview with the professor who writes about why the human brain clings on to the paranormal. We'll have to check it out. Thank you very much. Starry Night, thanks for a 45 stream streak. Where'd the music go? Am I crazy? Feels like it went a little too quiet. It's fine. Um... What else? What else? DM Trey, how's it going? Um, and we're caught up. Cool beans. 15 inches of snow there. That doesn't sound fun. That doesn't sound fun at all. Lady Anne says, had lunch with my daughter. Mom and sister are a really are at a really nice, or rather, had lunch with my daughter, mom, and sister at a really nice pizzeria, but my social batteries are drained. Well, I hope you have a wonderful, calm evening bereft of social interaction. And he got pizza, which is always good. Mm. Did you bring me pizza? Did you, did, you, did you bring enough pizza for the rest of the class? I think that's the question. The YouTube volume is low. Not really anything I can do about that. <laughs> like, my volume is my volume. I don't know why YouTube would in particular be low. So you just gotta turn up the volume on your computer. And if it's maxed out, there are extensions for that. Because the volume seems to be okay for Twitch, which is, I consider my primary platform. Like, that's my primary stream platform, YouTube is secondary. Which I love that I get to do YouTube too, it's just that if one's gonna fuck up, you know? Anyway, so cool beans. Um, YouTube volume is hanging brain. Doesn't hanging brain mean your balls are out? Or your dick is out? I don't know if that metaphor works. Not sure if that makes any sense. <laughs> anyway, 
Um, so, let's just get into it, shall we? We are playing bingo, so make sure you get your bingo cards if you'd like. Um, my hair's a little fucky today, but it's fine. I'm not going to be self-conscious about it. This week the temperature goes almost 30 degrees Fahrenheit. I mean, I'd rather... I, I guess it depends. Right now I could do with a little bit of warmth. Not too warm, but I've been a little chilly lately, so... Alright, let's go ahead and see what we're going to do first. Pulled out plenty of stuff. Hey, let's start with something easy. Let's start with Chris. It's only a three minute video, so not too bad. I know we usually have to voice boost him, so I'll do that before I even start it. It tends to be a little quiet. So, let's get into Chris in his kitchen. Angry as per usual. Not in a car this time, though, so that's nice. Yeah, Chris took like three weeks off. Um, he did do a video three days ago that I think we covered, or at least I watched. Good morning, good evening, uh, good afternoon, wherever you may be. Uh, CC here, Chris, from New York, uh, Westchester County. It's um, 3.31. I meant three weeks off from videos. I'm sure he was working, but like he just didn't put up a video for three weeks. It's long for him. Normally he'll only go like two weeks, but who knows. 24. You know, I just, I, you know, happy Easter for everybody in the Catholic community. Happy Easter. Mine's not until May 5th. So I, I get to spend Easter. His isn't until May 5th? I'm confused. What denomination has Easter on May 5th? Oh no, he probably just means his family Easter is on May 5th, not like he's a specific denomination. It confused me because he said, oh, is it Orthodox? Okay, okay. Thank you. My first instinct was right then. Twice. For Protestants, it's also... Whatever last Sunday was. Sometimes it's just funny that he specifically said Catholics. And Protestants that. were like a non-thought to him. Forget it. Okay. Even um, though in the uh, United States, Protestantism, I think, is bigger than Catholicism by quite a bit. Well, I'm gonna show you something. Um, Prokagam, thanks for 34 months at Tier 3. Much appreciated. I'm in a good mood today. God damn. Okay, well, I was dying eggs. <clears throat> they, uh, they include some neat things. You know what these eggs? Stickers. You know what a sticker is? It sticks on things. It's an apt name, then. But you know what a sticker is on? Whatever you stick it on. That's right. It's your sticker. You can stick it wherever you want. That's the cool part about stickers. A flat surface like this. You can put stickers on curved surfaces. As long as it's not super angular. And even if it is super angular, if you fold it, like, right, you can do it. So basically, in a sense, what they did... Nope, nope, nopey, nope. Thanks for 20 months, says Beep Boop is they took a flat map and wrapped it around a ball and made you think you live on it. And I don't live on this. It's a model. But it's a model of what I live on, yes. Told you. Lies. So, let's take one of these stickers. Let's take this one right here. This is uh, a happy face. Uh, it's, let's try to wrap this around. I don't know where he's going with this. I'm very confused. Does he genuinely not understand that you can put stickers on things that aren't flat? I mean, flat, flat. Does he mean flat as in... He doesn't mean a plane, I'm assuming. He just means like it's one surface. It is a surface that is not... There's not a bunch of angles all around. A ball. Well, it's an egg. How do you think I came out? It was pretty good, right? I'm sorry. It's not bad. But you see, the conformity, when you wrap shit around a ball, always has crevices. Uh oh, you can't really get Oh, it. I see what you're saying. Yes, that does happen. That's why when you have maps that are different projections, they're different projections, because there's something that's got to give. When you're trying to take a three-dimensional object and project it into 2D, it's always going to be 
kind of wrong because it's not the shape that it is. So something's got to give. And that's why when they make maps, they take that into account and create different models that will do different things. But if you want an accurate model of what the Earth actually looks like, it's, it's this more or less. I mean, there are certainly more accurate globes than this one from Five Below or wherever I got this. But like, that's about there. It's right. Oh, damn it. You see? Th there you go. Okay. It's, it's folding right there. It's creased. He does mean smooth. I believe he means smooth. It doesn't look right. Because it's not right. You can't fold a piece of paper around a bowl at all. You don't know what you live on. You have no idea what you live on. He thinks the fact that maps are projections is evidence the Earth is flat. No. Um, as evidenced by your reference the other day, you know more than Mindy. Any opinion on the show it spun, it spun from? I haven't seen enough happy days to really say. In fact, the episode I'm most familiar with is probably the episode with Mork where he beats up Fonzie. Um, it's fine. <laughs> Again, I haven't seen it in decades. But, like, it's probably fine. Smooth like brain. Brain and brain? What is brain? <sighs> Solid reference. You have no idea what the size of the continents are. You have n no knowledge at all. All the ball earthers have no knowledge. I mean, they, they're looking at a picture of Brazil that's the size... The, it takes up... The entire half. Yeah, Mork and Mindy's a spin-off of Happy Days. Of Earth. It Mork make... originally showed up in an episode of Happy Days in the 50s, beat up Fonzie, and then at the end of the episode was like, Orson, I'm going to go to the 1970s. And then he did, and then Mork and Mindy happened. Make any sense, there are a lot of Happy Days spin-offs. Joni Loves Chachi, uh, uh, of course, Mork and Mindy, um, Laverne and Shirley. I'm sure there's more. Is it? You can't put something that's flat around on a ball. Okay. And? Again, I don't know why he thinks this is a slam dunk. Stone Corbell, thank you for gifting a sub. It doesn't work. Fucks the whole map up. Anyway, I thank you for subbing and thank you for viewing my videos. Let me be a part of your life and happy Easter. Excuse me, Chris. You're supposed to say hoppy Easter. You're a dad. You're supposed to do the dad jokes. Lame. Did I ever listen to Weezer with Buddy Holly? No? The only Weezer song I know is... Didn't they do a version of Africa with Weird Al? For that version. He is the dad joke. Okay, so Flat Earth on the bingo card. Sweater song from Spongebob. The best time to wear a striped sweater is all the time. One with the collar, turtleneck, that's the kind. Cause when you're wearing... Where'd my Ivanka Trump time travel video go? It's very important that I find that, because I'm doing a show where I'm supposed to show people conspiracy theorists. I don't know if you've heard of it. Uh, where did that go? There she is. Ivanka, New Year, Paris, the looking glass. Let's get into it. Come Undone, the sweater song by Weezer. I don't know if I've heard it. Ivanka posts a series of photos from Paris. Standing on top of the Eiffel Tower, looking through this uh, telescope thing. One sec, let me adjust the screen so you can see it better. What I should do is have two separate screen captures, one for YouTube and one for BitChute, and then when I switch between them, I can click one button. But that would make me a professional, and I'm not a sellout. So for you, I choose to do it in a less effective way, to stay down to earth, okay? It's really for you, it's for your benefit that I do a worse job. 
standing in front of a giant clock in an all black uh, outfit. Is everyone who stands in front of clocks a time traveler? I was gonna say, does that mean Doc Brown's a time traveler? Because famously in Back to the Future 3, there's the picture in front of the clock. But that's a bad example because he is a time traveler. My point is, people do stand in front of clocks, sometimes when they're time travelers, but that doesn't mean that everyone who stands in front of a clock, ipso facto, is a time traveler. I've stood in front of clocks, not traveled through time, except the one direction, forever, ceaselessly bounding towards my own death. I don't have caffeine today. I'm out of soda. <laughs> Mona Lisa with Jared having lunch or breakfast outside. Um, so I looked into it and it hit me because Q just took photos of the Eiffel Tower. Q referenced on the bingo card. QAnon referenced. It's not pop. It's soda. It's soda. I'll fight. I'll fight over this. Uh, a couple weeks before that. So I'm thinking, all right, there's got to be something here. So then it hit me. The book, A Race Around the World. Let me read a little bit on this for you. In 1889, New York reporter Nellie Bly, inspired by Jules Verne's Around the World in 80 Days, began a circumnavigation she hoped to complete in less time. Her trip was... Fountain drink, that's fine. What we can all agree on, the soda and pop people can agree on one thing, and it's that the people who call every kind of soda Coke are the worst. Is that an agreement? What's important is we found an even smaller enemy to all collectively rally against. See? Peace in our time. You're welcome. Sponsored by her employer, employer The World, just hours after her ship set out across the Atlantic, another New York publication put writer Elizabeth Bisland on a westbound train. Bisland was heading uh, around the world in the opposite direction, thinking she could beat Bly's time. Sorry, Prokagom. Prokagom said, I think you mean Coke. No, I did not. Only one woman could win the race, but both completed their journeys in record time. So, record time. You got her, you got Ivanka standing in front of the clock, right? So that's, uh, I'm like, okay, this is kind of cool, but... Spurious symbology is evidence on the bingo card? It's soda pop. It's soda pop to me. Coke is one specific type. What drew me to the book was what they were wearing. And if you look at what Ivanka's wearing on top of the Eiffel Tower, she's wearing the exact same jacket as the character in the book, A Race Around the World. And behind Wait, her on the cover of the book on. was what... I mean, that's not the same jacket. For one thing, Ivanka's is houndstooth. The one in the book looks to be checker patterned. Houndstooth and checker are two different patterns. Is this just like a cis dude thing that he can't tell the difference between checkers and houndstooth? Jesus Christ. They were wearing. But no, they don't look the same except that there's black and white. Which is about it! <laughs> and if you look at what Ivanka's wearing... I'm because Chamberlain's saying peace in our time aged so well? That's the joke. <laughs> Bubble Homestead with a hundred bits. Top of the Eiffel Tower, she's wearing the exact same jacket as the character in the book, A Race Around the World. And behind her on the... So much for the pattern recognition overdrive. No, 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 this is the interesting thing. I've talked about this before. The thing about conspiracy theorists is that there have been studies done that show when there are actual patterns, they're worse at finding them. So their pattern recognition is, like, so fucked that they basically miss the forest for the trees. So that is a measured phenomena that known conspiracy theorists can find patterns where they don't exist, but they're also not very good at finding actual patterns. Yeah. It's pretty out there. Covers, they have a picture, or, you know, a, a clock behind these characters, and they're literally trying to beat time. So, looking glad. Janerdi says, I'm reminded of something that would be funny if it wasn't infuriating. A school kid once got suspended from school for wearing a Pepsi shirt to Coca-Cola Day. Well, that's ridiculous. You had a fucking Coca-Cola day at your school? That's fucked up. <laughs> I'm not comfortable with that. Paul the Potato says soda pop or soda pop. I typo auto-corrected. It happens. 
last time. You got this uh, anomaly with, with, you know, this coincidence. You're gonna answer to the Coca-Cola Corporation. Someone's a fan of strange love. And so the jacket. <laughs> <laughs> now you open up the book. Now let's flip to some pages in the book and yeah, see. The other- I wasn't as sure because the other picture was more zoomed out. This is zoomed in. That is absolutely a checker pattern. What do we have here? The main character getting off at the train station and just happened to be wearing the exact same outfit that he bought- It's just a black- wearing in front It's of just the, black! The clock tower. Okay, no. First of all, the main character in the book is wearing a full dress. That's a dress. What Ivanka is wearing is a long flowing coat that has, um- uh, like a skirt. That's a long coat with a skirt. Those are two different things. If male conspiracy theorists could t think before they say things about clothing, that would be great. <laughs> I mean, that's two for two. That's insane. I mean, there's definitely a connection here of some sort of coincidence. Um, oh shit, we're on a hype train. 27% to level one. Did I miss that or did I just forget in the last minute? But wait. Let's see what else we can do with this. Now back to the cover of the book. I mean, look at the sky in the background. It's almost, I mean, it's practically the same sky as in the- The sky looks like the sky. I guess he gets a point for that one. The sky is the sky. DM Trey, thanks for gifting five tier one subs and getting us over level one. Toriador says, that's some good pattern recognition, brain. Paris photos from Ivanka's Instagram. Again, probably Overthought. just purely Thanks for gifting five tier one subs. Coincidental. Oh shit, I need to reset my thing for the month. Hold on. I'm so... Have... I forgot to reset. Give me one sec. I know the number of subs that have been gifted, so I'll make sure it starts with the correct number. Give me one sec to restart the thing for the month. I'm a professional streamer. I remember to do all the things that it's my job to do for my well-being and bills. I know what I'm to do. I gotta hit this button and I can't come up with a song and read at the same time. So let me... There we go. That should be fixed now. Sorry about that. Speedo Spank, thanks for 25 months, says wowee. That's like almost a thousand months. That is. I'm bad at math, though. Hats off. Brain the Fool, what do you want me to wear for the hats off? Talked about the planet. Oh shit, I didn't- I'm- I'm so dumb, I didn't start the thing with the subs you guys gifted. Why do I do this? Let me fix that real quick. Witch hat? I can do that. Give me one sec to fix the thing again, and then I will put on the witch hat and everything should go more smoothly. 51% to level 3. Uh, by the way, on YouTube, I don't think I said it, but if you could like the stream, it would be much appreciated. Oh, maybe I can't start with a certain amount with this one. Shit. Well, I'm dumb. Sorry about that. I guess it does have to start at zero. Okay. Back to the video. Glass. I mean, literally the, the looking glass, okay? Might find it useful to start a start of the month checklist for stream? I don't disagree. Okay. The yellow background, and she just happens to write reflecting on a new year with a yellow heart. Now, why the yellow heart? Yellow heart is Q in the color code. We've seen Melania do this with the, with the yellow dress, and now Ivanka with the yellow heart. Again, signaling um, Q, the color. Wait, yellow is Q's color now? Okay. Now, That's with all know. this going on with, uh... Um... I don't think I'd heard that before, that some people think yellow is Q's color? Okay. How did I miss that? That's weird. 
Who's the tiny friend on the coffin DVD case? This is Cauldron Holefield. He is not a phony. With with uh, the Instagram photos and the looking glass ideas and all kinds of stuff like that. The looking glass, for those who don't know, um, QAnon people believe is a device that allows you to look into the future, or at least potential futures, or alternate futures. It kind of depends on the individual you're talking to. But it's basically a, a fictional sci-fi device for looking into the future that they think QAnon, or Trump, or whoever has. Clothing, time travel, how do we take all we that and connect it train. to a Q post, okay? Now, Ivanka's Instagram... That is what I was humming, Peter. Graham. Posted at 5.48 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. There just happens to be a Q post. There are Q posts all the goddamn time. With the words racing around the world in it. The date of that Q post is May 4th, 2018, which is 5... Four, eight, and it's Q post thirteen seven. Numerology on the bingo card seventeen, which has to do with John Kerry secretly meeting with Iran to salvage a deal. Thirty seconds on the hype. This is this is the same time period where Iran was having all kinds of stuff going on with Soleimani and and, and um, you know it was in the news. So I was like, okay, that's relevant. But look at this. Um. Riri drops. Today, JK and Iran. Important context for future news. Why is Hussein JK traveling worldwide, traveling worldwide, and meeting with foreign heads of state, some enemies of the US? HRC, BC, flying under the radar. Same, unreported. Think Why? Sanguin. Thanks for 10 months. Two, former president, secretary of state's out of power authority, racing around the world. Pre-post, POTUS, why? Unprecedented? The world is connected. The world is watching. The Q posts, for those who haven't read them, are basically declaratory, not even declaratory, either declaratory sentences or open-ended questions, often open-ended questions. Um, the idea is to sort of allow conspiracy theorists to work amongst themselves to come up with the conspiracy. It's almost the democratization of conspiracy theory. I say that derogatorily. <laughs> I mean it in the sense that the crowd basically is outsourced to do the work of actually coming up with the conspiracy theory. All the Q person has to do is post ominous statements and they have a big enough audience that the audience will fill in the blanks. It's pretty astounding. Like, it's... How do I put this? It changed the conspiracy theory game. QAnon changed to the conspiracy theory game. It's pretty nuts. Q. And you have to remember that John Kerry met with those Iranians in Paris, nonetheless, okay? Karazi, and uh, which undermined the Logan Act back in May 13th, 2018, which is, what, eight days after this Q post? Let's jump back inside the book. There's a, a photo of a train in the lower corner, okay? This train looks familiar. Charles Delscow was one of America's earliest known visionary artists who created drawings, collages, and watercolors of airplanes, airships, and bound them in 12 known large scrapbooks that were discovered decades after his death. Now, within this collection of the series is a few that stood out. One was uh, a drawing of uh, Homer Trump, and it shows these, uh, these aircrafts, okay? So, uh, Homer Trump, what's that? I don't know. But, look at this one. It's a train with the name Trump on it from the 1920s. I mean, this almost looks identical to the train. No, it does not! That's in this book. Oh, this poor guy. Uh, uh, race around the world. He's really trying to fit the evidence to the narrative he wants to tell because those do not look anything like each other. But if you look closer, there's a boy in the window. Uh, He's gonna say it's Baron. Baron? I don't know. And look at the front of the train. 
There's already time travel QAnon conspiracy theories about Baron because there's a book from the early 1900s or late 1800s around the si time of like the Tom Swift series when like boy ad boy inventor geniuses were like in vogue for like children's stories. Um, there was a story about um, a character named Baron or named something Trump, but they were a Baron. And conspiracy theorists picked up on that and decided it's about Baron Trump. Does that not look like a Trump? I mean, the face, the yellow hair, um, holding something. But it's just interesting that this name Trump, it's a train, and there's two characters in it that look really, really familiar. I'll definitely have to do another video on this Delcal character. That doesn't artist, look like a train. And, uh, connections between... Uh, is it not an airship? You said he drew airships. The time... Like, it's an interesting piece of what I presume to be outsider art, which is an interesting topic, as you'd imagine. I am into that. But, like, I don't even think it's a train. Period, what was going on, a certain aero club, which had elitist engineers, scientists, uh, private funding, where some of this um, experimental aircraft might have been actually been built. So I'll have to get into that a little bit later. Now, you can't forget the previous book, Barrett Trump's Marvelous Underground Journey, is. which just happens to have to do with a young fellow embarks on time-traveling adventures through human history named Baron Trump, who, who is led by someone named... To be clear, the character's name is not Baron Trump. Their name is Trump, and they are a Baron. So they are Baron Trump, but their whole name isn't... isn't Bar like, Baron Trump's name is Baron Trump. He isn't a Baron. But in the book, he is a baron, and his name is also Trump. Does that make sense? Don, and is written, coincidentally, by someone named Ingersoll Lockwood. Ingersoll, as in the watch, Alice in Wonderland. Which Don't bring Lewis Carroll into this. Coincidentally, is um, placed at 45... A baron is a title of nobility. If John Street in New York has watches named Trump in the collection of watches, has the name Keystone in the collection of watches, and yeah, just coincidentally, Ivanka's hinting at this other book which has to do with racing around She's the not. world. It's not! It's so sad and interesting to me how firm people get on their beliefs about stuff like this. It's not just that he's like, this is weird. Which would be weird enough to think that this is weird. It's not. He's he, he's fitting things to match what his belief already is. But the fact that he's, like, confident and states as a premise... Yeah, she's, she's, she's signaling about this book as if these aren't generic photos. Like, this is just, I'm doing a vacation photo shoot. But he is sure that this is signaling that random book that she's probably not aware even exists. Seems like an obscure book in time. So what does this all mean? I'm under the impression that the Trump family has had this technology, looking glass, um, quantum teleportation, any sort of chronovision. Believe sci-fi technology exists on the bingo card? Jadardi says, second pointless fact, there's a guy in the UK who changed his name to King Arthur because of the legend, but if he was ever to somehow take the throne, his name would be King King Arthur. I love rich people who don't think before they act. Um, since, you know, John Trump's, uh, the, the uncle got the Tesla papers and they've been using this to save America, save the world. And, and they are obsessed with Nikolai Tesla. That maybe Trump's children are using this technology and we're starting to see this mixed in with today's timeline through these hints and the books and the past. And, and like I said, none of this would have been possible without Q saying Project Looking Glass going forward in order to look back. Uh, time travel is fun, or... So, there's a lot of things coming up, and I think we gotta keep our eyes open to this, and I know a lot of people don't wanna believe it, it's hard to believe, and, and you're crazy, but, I mean, imagine the technology through DARPA, through secret programs of, of history, the technology that's been suppressed is starting to come to light, and I think that's what Space Force is gonna do, and, and Donald Trump's second... Feels like that'd be more Time Force. It's a term is we're gonna start- Or at least space-time force. Seeing, hopefully- it's Kind of a mouthful, though. Some of this- Probably just go with time force. Technology, uh- Time... Uh, emerge. Time force. Time force. Nope.
not Power Rangers time, stream time, ADHD brain. We're focusing. Timeless wonder, time to save the world. Through the looking glass, further beyond. Let's start where we left off. The jacket from the cover, identical cool to jacket. that of Ivanka, on top of the Eiffel Tower looking through the glass. Also, the hair. Same hair. Let's get the... <laughs> style they both have hair i have hair as far as i know glove look at the glove same gloves one last thing look at those boots looks familiar doesn't it those boots looks familiar doesn't it no those are not even close to the same boots now, let's jump back to the Paris picture where she's standing in front of the clock. Let's mirror that. Look at the time. She's pointing to the spot right between the three and the two. Now, the most powerful image in the collection from Paris. For the record, for photographs and illustrations, there are general rules to where you place the hands to make it look good. Just wanted to point that out. It's a balance thing. It's an image balance thing. So if you're drawing a clock, or if you're taking a picture of a clock, usually you try to do it, like, at specific times, or you set the clock to be specific times because it looks nicer. Prakagam says, this man might as well say, women on cover, woman in pictures. Same woman! Paris is the one where she's standing on top of the Eiffel Tower, staring into the light, and arms out. Where have we seen this before? I don't know, Donald Trump. Trump's Twitter banner? Ivanka's photo of her child in a Star Wars costume. Of course he's dressed as a stormtrooper. First order, I know. Prakagam says this man might as well say woman. Oh no, I read that. General Flynn's Twitter banner. It's almost like this is just a general thing people do in specific circumstances. Like when you need to T-pose on the haters. Arms out, what does it mean? What do you do before jumping out of the aircraft? You put your arms out and you yell, Geronimo! Geronimo? We've seen this before in the Q post. For God and country, for humanity, Geronimo, Q. Geronimo equals jump. What is jump? <laughs> Prakagam says, holy shit, Hannah, you're wearing the same hat as Ivanka. I didn't know you were her. A jumper. T-pose to assert dominance. I don't think I'm allowed to T-pose then. A person teleports by essentially opening a rift in the fabric of reality. In reality, passages across space and time That's from Doctor Who. Of the wormholes. Could it looks like it. That looks like the time vortex from Doctor exists. Who in some and of its permutations. Going into one mouth of a wormhole could spit you out of another instant. Okay, maybe it's a graphic that just looks like it. It is just kind of a writhing temporal tunnel. Lance is trying to love herself, says, pretty sure paratroopers don't do that. Also, hello, everyone. Hello. Toriador says, looks like that outfit is based on the actual dress of the actual historical figure. It's not houndstooth, it's a hatch. Okay. Well, there you go. I guess I didn't realize it was based on a real person. He probably said that, but I might not have believed him because he's a conspiracy theorist. That's cool. I really like that jacket. Someone go back in time and steal me that lady's jacket, please. I'd appreciate it. And also, give me your time machine. I need it. Why does Q refer to many Hollywood movies throughout their posts? Because unfortunately, a lot of people's perception of the worlds are shaped by films. Um, and that's not a bad thing. Art is expanding. It can give you different perspectives. But if your only perspective on life is through media, it can be warped and easily used against you because you don't have a reality to check it against. So it's easy to explain things through the metaphor of films. That's why. It's one of the reasons they say, we're all watching a movie. We're all watching a movie on the bingo card. 
Messy Jaden says, All video games are part of the Trump conspiracy. The making of video games will bring about past future Baron Trump. What does it mean? It means those at the top of the pyramid, Hollywood and the Cabal, use movies to condition society for future events. QPO749. Coincidence the Matrix movie group people as a crop, used for energy and control their mind? Sound familiar? Wonder where they derive that idea from. Now comes the conspiracy. The original script actually said that they were being used as processors, but the studio thought that was too complicated, so they made them batteries. But that's banal studio interference shit, so it probably wouldn't fit into your grand conspiracy. Label. Deeper we go, the more unrealistic it all becomes. The end won't be for everyone. That Predictive programming, yes. Choice to know will be yours. Q. Hollywood has been creating time travel movies since the beginning. That's actually not true. The first time travel movie, to my knowledge, not counting things like projects about Rip Van Winkle. Um, nope, that's the 2000s version. Where did I put it? I have it around here somewhere. There it is. So the first actual time travel movie or story in general that we know about is H.G. Wells's, uh, was it 1910 or 1890? It's around there. Somewhere in that time period, he wrote The Time Machine. And then in 1960, I want to say this was... Hannah mentions Blu-rays on the bingo card, because, well, here it is. In 1960, it was adapted for the first time into a film, The Time Machine, which is a pretty good old movie if you're into movies from the 60s. Uh, it was then remade uh, in the early 2000s, uh, which you may have also seen. But there have been many time travel movies throughout the years. I own many of them. Pretty much this whole top shelf is my time travel collection. Um, 1895? Thank you. <laughs> I know, I did the Orson Welles thing the other day. It's not nefarious. It's I have a whole book about this. It's called The History of Time Travel, and it's actually really interesting. It's about when and how the fictional trope of time travel came into being. And like I said, it's a lot more recent than you would assume. It's like 1895. H.G. Wells came up with it, as far as we know. Vague concepts of it have existed elsewhere, but the concept of someone making a machine that lets you voluntarily go back and forth in time, that's new. Um, Rip Van Winkle is a honorable mention, but it doesn't have the same dynamic of the place they go to being very different. Rip Van Winkle's family and friends are dead when he wakes up, but the world is mostly the same. H.G. Wells, I, I don't know, it's hard to explain. I'd have to read you the whole book to basically explain, but it is considered the origin of the time travel trope. Kind of like, let's look at my slasher movies. There are movies that predate Halloween that can be argued to be the originators of slashers, right? Psycho, Alice Sweet Alice, certainly Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But still, even though, uh, what else? Peeping Tom Black Christmas. Trying to get as many as I can in there. However, the first for sure slasher movie is Halloween, the thing that popularized it. So it's similar with the time machine. There are things that you could argue, like, doesn't this have this element or that element prior to the time machine? But H.G. Wells' The Time Machine is for sure the first one that has our modern conception of a time machine. It's not a conspiracy. Humans just like interesting novel ideas. And eventually, we came up with the idea of traveling through time in some sort of machine. It's fun. It's cool. It relates to how people feel about the world. It's a metaphor for people having nostalgia for the past or curiosity about the future. People who have regrets wanting to go back. People who want to escape their current predicament. I don't know. There's all sorts of storytelling things you can do with a time machine, is what I'm trying to say. It's not evil. I don't know. It just... I'm a huge fan of time travel. It's like my favorite science fiction trope, and I'm a big fan of science fiction. It's my favorite genre. So it annoys me that he's acting like it's nefarious. I love time travel movies. How dare you? Acclimate and prime the public for future technologies yet suppressed. Movies like Donnie Darko discussing 
wormholes and the philosophy of time travel. The film Stargate that shows an einstein rosen Bridge portal device that can transport humans between two different locations. But See what I mean? Q-Posts watch the water, which could mean anything. I've seen that used in relation to that, um, when the ship got stuck in that canal. I've seen that with, like, hurricanes, and now he's using it to try and say it's, a, it's referencing Stargate. When you're vague, conspiracy theorists will take what you say and turn it into anything, because that's what they do. 2008 titled Jumper caught my eye. Let me tell you about my day so far. Coffee in Paris? Huh, look at that, Paris. Surf the Maldives. Took a little nap on Kilimanjaro. Oh yeah, I got digits from this Polish chick in Rio. And then I jumped back for the final quarter of the NBA Finals. Courtside, of course. And all that before lunch. I could go on, but all I'm saying is I'm standing on top of the world. Top of the world? Take a look at the artwork from the poster. Look familiar? Jumper. Paris. Eiffel Tower. This is the most anyone's talked about Jumper since it came out, probably. I actually didn't hate the movie Jumper. It's fine. Um, the Jumper posters had all sorts of different landmarks because that was the premise of the movie was that he sort of had this mutant abili ability to teleport wherever he wanted in the world and he had fun with it. He, he stole from people to make money, but he could go wherever he wanted. So a lot of the advertising for the film had this sort of imagery, him at the Eiffel Tower, him on top of the Sphinx, etc., etc., right? Um, it's just supposed to be a power fantasy. What if you could go anywhere? I think the scale is off on how big he is on that Eiffel Tower, though. That looks really off. <laughs> uh, yeah. Jumper's the perfect it's on TV on FX in the middle of the day movie, and you're like, oh, fuck it, I'll watch this. Another poster from the movie Jumper. Look familiar? The clock. Again, it's him on Big Ben. Same idea. Going anywhere. Using icon I iconic landmarks to denote that he is able to go anywhere. <sighs> How many coincidences before it becomes mathematically impossible? If you go out of your way to try and say any random two events are related and make it a coincidence, then it's incredibly likely. Um, doesn't understand what coincidences are on the bingo card. He's manufacturing coincidences. He's convinced himself that these things are in any way related to each other when they're not. Not uncommon for conspiracy theorists. Now let's jump back to General Flynn's Twitter account with a jump around the banner. Wouldn't it be amazing if General Flynn could give us some sort of communication regarding jumping and time travel? September 8th, 2018, General- Is fiction about time dilation considered time travel fiction? It depends. Um, like, I, it depends. I have Interstellar on my time travel shelf. So I, apparently I made that call in the past. I think it just depends. But like Groundhog's Day, I wouldn't consider a time travel movie. That's a time loop movie, which I think is a different thing. No related. I don't know. Earl Flynn likes a tweet that's titled, Is This Proof? Donald Trump is a time traveler? Boom. Did he just say boom to a random title on a YouTube video? Boom! Someone else posted a YouTube video with the title I agree with. It must be true. Was Interstellar good? I like Interstellar. It's a Christopher Nolan movie, so it depends on how much you like Nolan, I guess. It's full of Nolanisms, but I enjoyed it for what it was. Do you believe in coincidences? Relevant to future upcoming events. How many coincidences before mathematically impossible? It was over before it began. Q. It seems to be that if you wanted time travel, the place to be is the Eiffel Tower in Paris. What? From Disney's Tomorrowland. Using a teleportation device, the trio travel to the top of the Eiffel Tower. Frank explains that Gustave Eiffel, Jules Verne, Nikola Tesla, and Thomas Edison co-founded Plus Ultra. A secret society of futurists. Oh, boo. That's... 
Tomorrowland. That was a disappointing movie. I love retrofuturism. That movie sucked. And also, George Clooney and that child robot made me uncomfortable. Creating Tomorrowland in another dimension. Free to make scientific breakthroughs without obstruction. The trio used an antique rocket hidden beneath the Eiffel Tower called the Spectacle to travel to Tomorrowland. Now let's jump back to January 18, 2017. Donald J. Trump tweets, Writing my inaugural address at the Winter White House, Mar-a-Lago three weeks ago. Looking forward to Friday. Check the notepad. It's curled up. It's hidden. You can't see it. Look in the background. What do you see? Plus Ultra. This is an AI photo, isn't it? No? It's interesting that the boss would mention three weeks ago and then looking forward to Friday. It's just weird text then. Sounds like time shift talk to me. What? Q post 3585, November 11th, 2019. Project Looking Glass, going forward in order to look back. Q. Okay, I guess it's a real photo. Jumping one year weird. later from the day at Mar-a-Lago. Q post 543, January 18th, 2018. The Great Awakening. Q. Okay, I gotta be done with this guy. He's just going on and on. Holy crap. Uh, Lance is trying to love herself, says he can't see the pad because he's claiming to write the speech, but it's blank. Oh, for sure. Blatant. Let's take a look at the bingo card. Oh boy. Pop, mm, predictive programming, doesn't know what a coincidence is, we're all watching a movie. Um, I would say a lot of Q people have moved on, probably most compared to its height, but there are still some diehards that are still there. Some of the Q stuff has kind of just gotten absorbed into the broad right-wing movements, though, which is scary in its own right. <sighs> the Matrix. Hannah mentions Blu rays. Correlation isn't causation. Incorrectly believes evidence is self-evident. Absolutely. Uh, for oh yeah, yeah, he did show the Q posts and stuff on 8chan or 4chan. So yep, 4chan, 8chan, any other chan. Hey, tea with goblins, how's it going? <laughs> believe sci-fi tech actually exists. Spurious symbology is evidence, flat earth, QAnon referenced, and I think that's it. Anything else? Yes, correlation isn't causation. We have Blu-ray. Yep. Sorry, I gotta adjust that a little bit. Okay, I think we're caught up. Cool beans. Let's move on to the next thing. Shall we? And part one. Starting at the pyramids in Giza, going across the Sahara through the Atlantic. Crazy fact about the planet, part one.
Starting at the pyramids in Giza, going across the Sahara through the Atlantic Ocean, across South America, through the Pacific Ocean to Easter Island on the most remote opposite side of the planet, all the way back around back to the pyramids are 21 ancient mysterious sites all on the same line with remarkable precision to one another circling around the planet. And How big is the line width-wise? How big of a line are we allowing in terms of like... You know what I mean? Like they're not all lined up exactly, right? So like... How wide of a margin of error are you giving here? How much are you bending the line to make that fit? <laughs> Whoever was building the massive megalithic stonework, like what we find in Egypt, South America, even on Easter Island, had the capability to quarry, move, and lift unbelievable large masses of rock above your head and cut and shape the racist disbelief of historical achievements on the bingo card. I'm gonna call that. Stone with such a level of precision that you can't fit a piece of paper and in some places a razor blade in between the blocks as they butt up to each other. Many, if not all, of these sites have remarkable connections. How do you think masonry? Like, what the fuck do you? I don't understand how he thinks masonry works. That he thinks that's like impressive. Like, yes, they built a structure to be flush. Correct. <laughs> that's how you build structures that last a long time. Is their bottom heavy, and they are flush. Um, Chiba Hawk says that's called skilled masons doing their magic. Actions and astronomical alignments with the stars in the sky, along with the sun and moon, along with sharing identical architecture, stone cutting and locking. They do not have identical architecture. That's just fucking wrong. Poor understanding of architecture or misunderstanding of architecture on the bingo card. But they're pyramids. Aren't all pyramids the same pyramid? Isn't Stonehenge the same as Chichen Itza? techniques, making many of the walls and structures earthquake-proof, which is why they have lasted as long as they have. Now stick around for part two. Crazy fact about the planet part two. So I calculated these measurements from Google Earth, so they're not going to be perfect, but you'll get the idea. First thing to point out is that the golden ratio is 1.618. The distance from Giza to Rapa Nui or Easter Island is 16,180 kilometers. The distance from Angkor Wat to Giza multiplied by the golden ratio gives us the distance from Giza all the way over to Nazca in South America. The distance from Giza to Nazca... Do you think that the people who built these were using kilometers? I don't even know if these measurements are correct. But, like, it doesn't even make sense because they wouldn't be using the same numerical measurement system that you do. You understand that, right? multiplied by the golden ratio gives us the distance from Nazca all the way back to Angkor Wat. The distance from Angkor Wat to Nazca equals the distance from Mohenjo-Daro to Rapa Nui. The distance from Angkor Wat to Mohenjo-Daro equals the distance from Mohenjo-Daro to Giza along with the distance from Nazca to Rapa Nui. And according to our current models that were taught in school, not only were these people in civilizations separated by vast distances... Texas sharpshooter strikes again. Yep. Sharpshooter fallacy and oceans, but also time, so they supposedly had absolutely zero contact with one another. Making all of this just one big old coincidence. Mm-hmm. Okay. Not only is there a connection between these important ancient sites all being on the same line going around the planet, but we also find- Wait, hold on. ...a connection between these important ancient sites all being on the- Oh my god, it does this! It goes boing boing, and then it like angles at like almost a 45 degree angle. What are you doing? That is not a single line. Oh my god. <laughs> that's so bad. Same line. There's no way he's looking at that and going, yep, that's a straight line. Not only is there a connection between these important ancient sites all being on the- Oh my god. It's like it pings off the Middle East like a Captain America shield and goes off at a completely different angle. <laughs> Same line going around the planet, but we also find a connection within their architecture. Take a look at the polygonal stone masonry on Easter Island. You see that stone? Now from Easter Island, let's go across the Pacific Ocean to Peru. Here we also find polygonal stone masonry in Cusco and many other sites in the area, like Machu Picchu, Olan de Tambo, and Sexe Waman. Back at the wall on Cusco, do you see that stone right there? Back up here. Profane Priestess says they move the blocks by soaking the sand, thus turning it into mud and minimizing friction. They also used, get this, ramps when building the pyramids themselves. They didn't have metal hard enough to cut the stone, but they used sand, another abrasive outcome, uh, to overcome this limitation. Wait a minute, are you trying to tell me that people used the basic machines to construct incredible things and also were skilled themselves at the thing that they spent their lives doing? Fucking incredible!
Here at Machu Picchu, you see the stone right there? Back on Easter Island, does this look- I'm sorry, but you've thrown off the Emperor's groove. Familiar? Don't throw off his groove! Now let's go across the Atlantic over here to Egypt. Look here again, we also find polygonal stone masonry. Culture again, like, this would be like saying there are domes in various places in the world, or arched bridges, or, 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 <laughs> I don't know foundations and structures like there are certain things in building that people will figure out because they're a universal right or more or less like there's a good way to do certain things and people are going to figure it out cultures separated by oceans and time are using the same building techniques now from egypt let's go to angkor wat in cambodia again here we find polygonal stone masonry we always find these kind of joints, and they even curb the stone in the corner. Just like what we see in Peru and Egypt. And cultures all across the planet are using the same locking techniques. But you know what they say, it's just another coincidence. It's not a coincidence, it's just that that is a good geometric shape in order to make something to make it a strong link. And people figure that out. Like, it'd be like saying, wait a minute, you figured out 1 plus 1 equals 2? And you figured out 1 plus 1 equals 2? Oh my goodness, this is such a coincidence. No, they're both, they're, they're finding convergent answers to a, the same question. That's not a co coincidence. That's just how you find solutions to problems. Sometimes they converge. He's using a lack of standardization to say there was standardization. Yeah, as you do. Marcus Drake says, Pennsylvania is called the Keystone State because the Keystones are used in arches and we invented arches. Please do not fact check this. I won't. That's funny. Twitch withheld that message because of the word hole. Because of the word hole. I have to use the bathroom real quick, so I will be right back in just a minute. Um... Be, be, be good. Everyone behave. Chair will be watching you. Chair tells me everything that you do while I'm gone, for the record. I'm very ashamed of all of you. And a little impressed. Be right back.
Howdy, y'all. Welcome back. Thank you for being here. Giants on the bingo card. When we speak of giants, is it any coincidence that the seemingly mythical specimen, a precursor to man, or some would say a gift from the heavens, would have found references that have seeded their way into every aspect of modern day life? Yet, to the scientific world, giants are nothing more than a speculative fantasy, a farce. I mean, the pictures you're showing are people with gigantism, like that is a thing, but mythical giants are a different thing. Concocted by multiple persons throughout numerous centuries, somehow the interspersed legends have interwoven themselves so that the elegant, massive burial chambers, proof of the otherworldly beings, the evidence one might need to prove a biblical type occurrence, have all been discredited. The funny part is, coincidentally, until the Smithsonian Institution came along, a majority of mankind, including America's most famous president, believed that giants existed. And furthermore, the abundance of claims... They don't. He's actually referencing there a quote from one of the presidents, I don't remember which one, um, but talked about uh, uh, giants poetically. I don't remember what the context was, but I know I've analyzed this claim before. It was a speech or a letter or something that that president was writing, and he was speaking poetically, you know? Like, ah, oh, time when giants wrote, like, I, I don't remember the exact thing he was referencing. But, um, it was not this that he was referencing. It wasn't supernatural. ...of giant skeletons of man. Lincoln. It was Lincoln. Who did not believe in giants. Being found in America. And frankly, even if he did, it wouldn't make it true. Was only genetic fallacy only made more credible waterfalls or mammoths yeah by the hundreds of other burial mounds being found throughout the rest Lincoln talking about mammoths roaming America rest of the known world some will claim the bones are of the Nephilim a set of creatures Nephilim on the bingo card is outlined in the Bible essentially the offspring of fallen angels and humans to others these bones are not larger than life humanoids, but rather a worldwide manifestation of greed, where somehow hundreds of individuals, some with seemingly no means to do so, fabricated entire burial mounds and filled them with assorted animal bones to make them look like larger than average humans. Sounds egregious, doesn't it? While we have a handful of documented instances of this occurring, mostly in America in the 19th century, we also have hundreds of documented excavations of untouched burial mounds, which revealed numerous skeletons of at least seven feet in height. Again, people with gigantism exist contemporaneously as well have existed in the past, but there is not and has never been a taxonomic group of giants. Like, there is not a group of people whose genetics normally, under, under typical circumstances, produce giants regularly in a healthy way. People who are born with gigantism often face shorter lifespans and a lot of lifelong health issues because of it. It's, it's, it's a genetic anomaly, right? Um, it, it's, it's nothing wrong with it, but it's also not the thing he's trying to make it out to be. They aren't mythical creatures. They're human fucking beings who are just tall because they have a genetic thing. What makes this so interesting to me is that essentially 99% of the population believed in giants until roughly the mid-19th century. Andre the Giant was not a Nephilim, but he was cool. I say that because most of academia believed... I'd storm a castle with him anytime. ...believed in giants up until this time period, and the lack of a diverse education for the majority of the people in the world, made their understanding very limited. Between the three Abrahamic religions, which all make mention of giants, down to the numerous burial mounds being excavated at that time, not just in America, but worldwide, to the stories throughout the old world, myths and legends of giants, but also architectural history, which was tied to giants, castles said to be built by giants, castles <laughs> built upon giants, to keep Mytho-historical accounts, what are those? Profane Priestess says, On the subject of masonry constructed primarily from well-fitted-together stones, this is termed, um, Cyclopean masonry. It gets its name from the fact that it was popular amongst the predecessors of the Greek poli- Polis? Wait. Polis? Pol polius. Polius? Um, 
the my my oh man i suck the my san the my can the my canians i apologize uh greek philosophers assumed that the structures were built by the cyclopses because the stones are so big this is attributed to aristotle uh this shit goes back forever hmm fun keep them contained and castles which had been destroyed by giants this is all information that most people had at their fingertips in the 19th century. My, wait, my, Mycenaeans, Mycenaeans, there we go. And as we dive into today's video, Mycenaeans, 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 anathema. Video, we will begin to I feel like that probably won't come up as much as anathema, but I'll do my best. Mycenaeans, Mycenaeans. See the outstanding account of giants, some sensationalized, which shaped society's outlook through the 1800s. We will try to decode the currently accepted narrative regarding giants while also entertaining alternate theories about their existence, as well as examining news articles from the 17th, 18th, 19th, and early 20th centuries. We will also dive into a few outlandish claims, and we will have a very thorough look through some of these bones that were said to have been uncovered. This is a deep dive video today, one which should satiate the appetite of you who have been asking for a longer video. So let's get right into it. Essentially, the current scientific community tells us that Europeans arrived to America and embraced the myths of a pre-Columbian settlement from the Old World, which reframed colonization as the continuation of a primordial past. The settlers found intricate fortifications and earthworks, which according to the narrative, reminded them of their European ancestors, and thus, they developed a theory that the mound builders were of a Celtic stock. This appears to be a vast underselling of what was actually occurring. For example, the Susquehannock, which is now a word my devices do not recognize, were a vast group of indigenous people who resided along the length of the Susquehanna River from New York through Pennsylvania into Maryland and exiting at the Chesapeake Bay. The Susquehannock were said to have ruled this entire landscape with little resistance from outside groups. The Susquehanna first formed after the Little Ice Age in New York, and as conditions improved, they headed south along the river, which now bears their name, towards the Chesapeake Bay. According to their narrative, the Susquehanna established a ferry in Lancaster crossing the Susquehanna River, which is over one mile wide, and created a massive fortified and palisaded town in what is today Lancaster, by the year 1550. By the year 1605, the Susquehannock, who hunted and fished along the river, but utilized Lancaster as their home base, according to this narrative. Um, Kitty's on YouTube. I think, I think you're giving him to, I don't think that's the reason, at least for most of them. I don't think it's a, there were smaller people, therefore there must have been bigger people thing. Nah, I think it's mostly a mythology thing because giants exist in mythology and a lot of them believe that mythology and fiction in general is just a thinly veiled reality like they think everything in fiction is real in some way and i guess thematically it is but but they mean literally materially hydrate can do outgrew the town this however may have been caused by first contact with european settlers in 1608 the notorious john smith met with what he described as 60 giant warriors all standing at least two meters tall including the women. Some of the men were described at being well over two meters or six feet six inches tall. And if you can't trust first-hand verbal accounts that are centuries old from an asshole, what can you trust? These were the Susquehanna. They were described as living in fortified palisaded quarters An early 20th century excavation in Lancaster revealed their original city contained at least 25 unique structures of significant size. John Smith also described the Susquehanna warriors as having exquisite armor, exotic pelts, unique hatchets and knives, and most of all, brass weaponry, which they had apparently obtained from the French. What a coincidence. We have what are described as giant indigenous people already containing European weaponry when first documented by Europeans who already built They just said they got them from the French! Fortified and palisaded structures, these Susquehanna- Alright, this one's pissing me off. I gotta bail. He's trying so hard to try and make it a thing. Not a thing. 
oh, here's another weird AI bullshit thing. Uses AI on the bingo card. Excuse me, your most wonderful worshipfulness. Might I have an audience with your greatness? Yes. Scientism on the bingo card. Or doesn't understand the scientific method. Whichever. I don't know if we have scientism anymore, actually. So probably doesn't understand the scientific method. This is supposed to be Neil deGrasse Tyson. What is it, Globling? It's these pesky flat earthers, my- Globling. I kind of like that one. My lord, they trouble me. Saying things that strangely resonate with common sense and spark my critical thinking. Nonsense. Like what? Okay, scientism on the bingo card, then. I'm sure it's nothing and easily explainable, your most highness. But for example, why is it when searching for real photographs of Earth from space, every single result looks more like a CGI photoshopped image than a genuine photograph? The pictures that you're picking here are NASA photos that do get touched up, but they're actual photos. A lot of them are composite images, but you can find images of Earth that are not composited if you would like. Fool. That is because they are not photographs. What you are seeing is actually complex data sets taken from our geostationary satellites, translated into ribbons of imagery, then compiled into composite images. So you mean they're photoshopped? No, again... Let me put it this way. If I take photos that I have taken and put them into a computer and, like, maybe change the white balance or, like, change stuff, it is photoshopped, but that doesn't mean it's fake. Does that make sense? The photos are touched up. They are composite photos in the sense that they're taken, usually not as one big photo, but taken as a satellite is traversing the Earth, and then it's stitched together. But it's not fake. It's the same as using a panorama shot on your phone, right? And then, like, touching up the coloring or whatever. Yes, they're photoshopped, but they have to be. Silly globling. You, you can't just... Satellites can't just take a normal photograph like that. Satellites are too close to the Earth to take a photograph of its totality at one time, generally. Uh, we do have photographs of the entire Earth, though, from moon missions, from um, um, Voyager. Like, we, we do have these. You're specifically targeting ones that you think are suspicious because they're composite. You gotta do the ribbons of imagery composite thing. Is that why so many official NASA images of the globe have been exposed having exact duplicate clouds copied and pasted into the picture? Things like clouds and the exact colors, shapes, scale, and positioning of continents is all expertly extrapolated from datasets and rendered by our elite artists. There may occasionally be minor mistakes made during the process. What kind of camera do they think they have? They can take a picture of the entire planet at the same time. Again, they don't understand that satellites are re very close to the Earth still, relatively speaking. Like, size is not great for flat earthers generally. They're not good at spatial reasoning. Like when the Russian Electro L1 satellite photo of the Earth was accidentally released with a big Photoshop hand tool rendered into the final image? Yes. Again, the photos get touched up. That does not mean they are fake. How is this hard to understand? Do these people never edit their photos? If I take a photo at a party, and then I take it, and I start putting filters on it, or change the white balance or something... The photo of the thing is still the photo of the thing. I've just adjusted stuff within it. That doesn't mean that the photo is fake. <laughs> well, that's just those crazy cosmonauts. Um, actually, your lordship, if you compare side-by-side -side images of the Earth taken from outer space by various space agencies, they do look strikingly different from one another. Doesn't understand how cameras work. This is a, uh lens length thing. This is a zoom slash distance from the object thing. This is camera based. If you take, and this has been demonstrated, even a globe like this, if you take a picture right up with a camera right here with no zoom, it's going to look different than if you put back here and then zoomed in. Like, you get different perspectives. It looks different. Of course, Minion. 
They're taken from different distances. No, this is a spirit cameras, science. This is Eric Dubé. At times, so the scale and positioning will never be uniform. It does seem, though, Your Majesty, that the proportion of landmass visible in many globe images is irreconcilably skewed. Again, it's a camera thing. Often showing single continents taking up 50% of the picture. That is all merely an optical illusion, you imbecile. The images are captured at different distances and scaled up or down, giving the impression of continents appearing to change size. What about the Apollo mission Earthrises, most honorable one? Why in each image does the Earth globe appear so radically different in size? Does it? Size, shape, and color. They look the same to me, and I'm not trying to be a dick. I really do try and, like, listen to what the conspiracy theorist is saying and, and take it on their terms. I don't think it does. I think they look the same to me, more or less. <laughs> but even with, like, the color difference is going to be lighting and, and camera. Size. Different places on the fucking moon? They didn't land in the same place every time. Messy Jaden says, I like how they can't imagine any other way to answer questions outside of a religious context. They all have to talk like cults, um, not just make fun of uh, globe globoids, but from their own answers to their own questions. Yeah. They're not that different. I mean, what do you expect? Just out of curiosity, why do you suppose NASA has never turned Hubble, Webb, or one of their many space telescopes around? and zoomed in to show us upside-down planes, oceans, buildings. They're not built to do that. It's a telescope. It's not an optical camera in the way that you are describing. Things ...and people living down under in Australia. I'm sure people would love to see such a demonstration, and it would Why? E easily shut the Flat Earthers up forever. People don't care enough about Flat Earthers to take the time to do that for you. Turning a telescope around to look at ourselves? Preposterous. What a waste of important machinery to see what we already know. We need to forever be focusing This is Eric Dubé. He's putting filters on his voices to play these obnoxious straw men characters. ...on things millions and billions and trillions of miles away. And besides, Elon Musk already sent a car into space, and then gaslighted everyone by saying, quote, you know it's real, because it looks so fake. We'd have way better CGI if it was fake. Well, yeah, that makes sense, in a doesn't-make-any-sense kind of way. <laughs> and I'm sure the guy who wants to implant microchips into our brains is one to talk, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, that was something. Not something good, but something. <sighs> Speaking of cameras... Good evening everybody, God bless you all in Jesus' most glorious name. It is Friday the 22nd of March 2024. I hope you're having a wonderful day, or night, wherever you may be under a heavenly father's firmament. I'm here at Cape Solander, it's on the Cornell Peninsula in Sydney, Australia. Behind me you can see one of many container ships that go in and out of Port Botany. And that one is leaving, it's going somewhere, it's on the Tasman Sea, it could be going to New Zealand, it could be going to Babylon. Anyway, um, I saw a video the other day on our brother Wichter's channel, Wake Up channel. And um, in the video, a man was showing a, a news story about Nikon discontinuing the P1000. This is very funny. So Flat Earthers love the Nikon P1000. I think they've also used the P900. I don't know if that's still around. Um, but they like it because they use it at like lakes, big lakes, or like the ocean to try and disprove uh, that the Earth is round. Or they zoom in on the sky with it and think they see stuff. It's like a prosumer camera, you know? It's a it's like a DSLR camera with a pretty decent zoom. They like it. So Nikon is discontinuing the P1000, and conspiracy theorist Flat Earthers have been like, they, they gotta discontinue the camera because we know too much. 
Chat, why do you think Nikon is discontinuing this camera? The reason any company would discontinue a relatively popular product. Because there's a new version coming out. <laughs> it's not a conspiracy. A new model's coming out that's replacing this one. That's it. But of course it's a conspiracy. And, uh, yeah. Things are happening in the heavens. They don't... Yeah, the P1000's been around for a while. So it's like, it's not even like it came out last year and suddenly they're... No, it's it's been around. ...want us to see what is going on. And, uh... Too much truth has been seen and shared by using those cameras. But hey, praise Jesus, I still have mine. Yeah, the new one probably does have better. So. Praise God. So, I'm going to put it up on the tripod here behind me. And um, I'm going to zoom around and see what's going on. See you in the next video. Praise the Lord Jesus. If you don't know him, get to know him. Confess all your sins to him, not some dude in a box. I all new pic all new cameras will just show you a picture of a globe. Yep, no matter what you take a picture of too. You try and take a picture at a wedding, and it's just gonna be a picture of Earth. Just so you don't forget where you live. I confess it all to Jesus. Ask him It's like a shitty version of that Twilight Zone camera. To give you his faithful and true. He's just, he will forgive you because you're precious to him. him. He loves you more than you'll ever know, my friends. And uh Get baptized. Repent. Get baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Spooky. And um, just a quick warning. Funny friends, neighbors, family members, church members that are that. Yeah, the arm of the nose, you know what I'm talking about. We know something is going to happen. X marks the spot, April 8 eclipse, Nineveh, Babylon, wow, so um, yeah, stay away from them. Stone Corbell says this reminds me of Warhammer 40k, where in the far future humanity has forgotten how much their own tech works, or how much of their own tech works, and worship it like holy relics. Hmm, very, uh, horizon. You can, just, just stay away from them because, uh, they are going to change. I don't know exactly what date, but very soon they're going to be switched on by the five zap zap. You know what I'm talking about. And uh, yeah, they're going to display animalistic behavior because, you know, the things they talk, it's got different animal D to the N to the A, you know. They're beasts now, chimeras, and they're not in other father's image. Oh my goodness. So she believes that people who are vaccinated have spliced chimera dna that's not how that works so just just be careful pray on it but me personally i'm staying far away from them um yes marcus drink <laughs> praise the name of jesus i love you all wait is that on the bingo card if so See you yes. back in the next video Come here. <laughs> please get a wind sock for the next <laughs> win and next bingo version yeah that'd probably be a good one um toriador says i wish furries would get so vaccinated <laughs> Need to show you something. The Man, the wolf DNA is really popular. I wonder why. Number one reason why a lot of people are waking up to the truth of Flat Earth is the Nikon Coolpix P1000. This camera is the most powerful zoom in the world. Here's how I know. Here is how I know that we are gaining traction because they are discontinuing this product as of February 29th. Multiple articles. Several Japanese stores list the Nikon Coolpix P1000 as and will be discontinued production. Why is that important? Here's why it's important. They're the playing a song one. that I do like, but normal people going kind of worried about copyright. <laughs> Chimera DNA is that why I'm growing a goat head that breathes fire? Pretty literal in terms of Chimera DNA, but yes. Welcome back, everyone. It's been a while, so we're going to get back into... It's been a while! 
DM traits is it doesn't have the most powerful zoom. It has the best angular resolution. Ooh. Swing of things. We got quite a few things to talk about today. We're going to talk about the underground tunnel system that I think the Cabal and the Elites are going to somehow try to escape God's judgment. This must be really deep tunnels. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh. And we're the elites are going to somehow try to escape the tunnel system. That quite a few things to talk about today. We're going to talk about the underground tunnel system that I think the cabal on the cabal on the bingo card. I knew there was a bingo spot there. Elites are going to somehow try to escape God's judgment. And we're going to run trip fall says Ed Ward. Sorry, I had to. I'm not getting it. Stone Corbell says tunnels deep enough to avoid omnipotence. Talk a little bit about alien. It's a good tunnel. Demons. What I. One sec. I think these creatures are. I'm going to be the first to admit I am not certain of anything. They don't go around bragging about what they truly are. They want you to believe they are benevolent aliens here to help you. They want to believe some aliens are good and some are bad. So they're trying to play good cop and bad cop. But as many people will have already figured out, there's a lot of deception going on from the alien contactees. I believe some of the contactees have even figured this out, but I think they're little. So he believes aliens exist, like a lot of conspiracy theorists, but like Peter thinks that there are some good aliens and some evil aliens. This conspiracy theorist thinks that people who think there are good aliens are being deceived and that all aliens are demons. Aliens are demons on the bingo card. A little bit too invested where they're not even fully human anymore. Yeah, that's... The theme of the dehumanization of your political enemies is pretty common in conspiracy theories. It happens a lot. It's happening more often now. It's pretty big. Just keep an eye on that. A long conversation. So where is this coming from? Well, why are they wanting to build tunnels? Well, these people are keenly aware of what God is about to do to planet Earth. I believe because we are not the only people to ever exist on planet Earth. I believe there were previous uh, people that would be harvested in an end time scenario. And I'm talking about the Atlanteans and there's another one. Atlantis on the bingo card. Word for it, although I forget which one, what that word is. Um, a lot of people say that the the main mes like what Mesopotamia was to human civilization today. Uh, they they say that North America was the ground zero, the cradle of civilization for the Atlanteans. Uh, I, I don't know about that. I mean, the Smithsonian is the cleanup crew for the Cabal, so we're not supposed to know. Is it? I didn't know that. I hadn't heard that claim before. The Smithsonian is the cleanup crew for the Cabal. Must be where they get all their fancy stuff. These things. And After the last apocalypse, they really wanted to get their hands on Archie Bunker's chair. And it, it's a full-time job just for them to cover up uh, how old the Sphinx is, how old the pyramids are. But these are, I believe, these things were actually built by civilizations before Adam and Eve. Believe that or not. Uh... not. This is a weird one because he's clearly a creationist. But his conspiracy is that the 6,000 years ago biblical creation is predated by other civilizations. So he's like a young earth creationist, but also not. Kind of interesting. That's a unique... It's all bullshit, obviously, but in terms of like a unique mythology. I've not heard that one before. That's interesting. Vest Demon, thank you for 200 bits. So in the book of Revelation, we're actually going to get the Bible out today and say why I suspect these things. Uh, we're going to read a verse, and it says in the end time scenario, before God harvests all the souls on planet Earth, everyone hid in caves and among the rocks of the mountains that included the kings of the earth, the princes, and the generals. 
I believe that would be considered by today's standards the elite. A good history for a D and D world. That's pretty common, you know. Different civil as ancient civilizations and mythical, like or in fictional universes. It's a common trope. He said that that was the the precursor civilizations. Prophet John describing this. John the Revelator describing this as best he knew how. And it hope your nomming was good, profane priestess. He didn't miss much. This guy thinks that. Uh, "Quote unquote cabal members built tunnels to hide from the Lord's judgment." So that's good. It included rich people and powerful people. It also included everyone else, both slaves and people who were free. So everyone's trying to get in underground and escape the judgment of planet Earth being wiped away, harvested, uh, just like it perhaps had been in the time of the Atlanteans. They called out to the mountains and rocks, fall on us, hide us from the face of one who sits on the throne, hide us from the anger of the Lamb, the great day of their anger has come, who can live through it? So these people, I believe they are keenly aware of this judgment that's coming, that's why they built this, potentially built this elaborate tunnel system. Oh good, covering himself with the potentially... <laughs> like when I say, uh, 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 in my opinion, Steve with a Q says God created the heavens and the earth 6,000 years ago, but he was upcycling junk the previous deity left behind. Was it raw? He never cleans up after himself. Asshole. I believe the gentleman's name is Phil Schneider. He was a geologist that uh, got suicided. He had... Oh boy! He had to get suicided because he was spilling the beans talking about these deep underground bunkers, and everything sounded practical, they said, until he casually mentions that... Mm, Chinese food is delicious. ...that uh, some... Re oh, I want Chinese food. ...reptilians engaged in a battle with him, and he was... I might have egg rolls. I might have egg rolls in the freezer. ...was nearly killed in this battle, and it sounded too fanciful. Like, I think he described all this back in the 1990s. <clears throat> Let me get comfortable in my chair here. Uh, so, I think over time, there's been more and more interest in this deep underground tunnel system. If you live at any of these relay points or these entrances, you may have had, heard a weird story about government military doing things, not wanting to be seen, not wanting to tell people about it. And even I can confirm uh, at least one location. And then, of course, we all have heard about the Denver airport stories. That's a very common conspiracy theorist theory, and they've been giving out bug out bags, kind of like they want everybody to go away from that area. So, I, I a lot of this is just kind of hearsay. It's things to it's interesting to keep in the back of your mind. So, let's talk about the Atlanteans. Um, imagine this: so God judged them and harvested them, a lot like He's getting ready to harvest us, according. to the term harvest is an interesting choice here. What resources is God getting from us when he harvests? To the book of Revelations, book of Enoch, I think even the book of Daniel uh, talks about this stuff. So what I believe the aliens are, I don't necessarily believe they're from other planets. Maybe they went to other planets. But I suspect they were the elites from the Atlanteans that went underground. Now, the elites of today, they keep talking about the same crap. Uh, they, they keep talking about underground tunnel systems, blasting off the planet on a spaceship. They want to splice their DNA with other animals. What? And I, I think they actually did do Everyone get in. We're bioshocking. The Atlanteans did indeed do that. And um, maybe some of the reptilians were, were them maybe the orions or the more of the slave cast of the elites the useful idiots with really high iqs are incredibly oppressed like they don't even have genitals and they're not even allowed to wear clothes the, the reptilians are more predatory reptilians real and then the ones that are more kind of in charge they're, they're probably the Pleiadians or the nordics the i feel like the not being allowed to wear clothes and sans genital things is getting a little close to uh authors barely disguised fetish tall blonde hair blue-eyed beautiful people but i i i've heard many stories and you can think the orions are bad and the Pleiadians or the, the nordic white people ones are good but 
I've heard more than a few ab abduction stories that say that these people are on the same spaceships working side by side. So as much as they love to tell you there's good aliens and bad aliens and neutral aliens, I heavily suspect they're just humans that have spliced their DNA and they have incredibly old technology, tens of thousands of years old, and they, they love to come back to us and pretend to be gods. So I, and if you look at that, you, you can see like maybe this one was a part bird, part human, this one part wolf, that would actually be a it's animism or it's like part of partially anim like like the taking animal traits and, and putting them into deities is common. This is not this is not something inexplicable, this is not weird, this is like a common thing that was done historically was gods would not just necessarily be reflective of humans, but reflective of other creatures and humans often. In modern day I don't get I don't get it. Werewolf which some of the Illuminati it's not a werewolf. It's not what a werewolf is. A jackal isn't a werewolf. Claim that they can turn into. They claim that uh, some of the aliens are actually part wolf, and those are the real, real evil fer feral types. The the no, vampire I've never seen mass. are ones are obsessed with blood, according to Bill Shinoblin. But it's the wolf uh, ones that were incredibly, incredibly dangerous. So I want to look at. Gotta watch out for the omegas when they're in heat. At one of these. Let me see if I can find Sobek. Sobek. Thought I had Sobek loaded up. Ew. Ah, here he is. Uh, the lower left, right here, that's an alligator in a humanoid form. Now, I. Did I say I regretted what I just said? I believe if a ancient Egyptian saw a reptilian, and I'll show you what one. I stand by that Omega Verse reference. The alien contact. No shame. At these, uh, you can see right here. He's saying that's what they look like. So even though, even though they don't have a long snout, um, you would say it, maybe it looks kind of like an alligator. Maybe it looks kind of like a snake. And if you saw crocodile, saw it in a humanoid form. They don't have alligators in Egypt. Maybe this is exactly how you would draw it right here on the lower left. Uh, so I want to look at some other aliens. Th these are the Nordics right here. Very beautiful uh, blonde haired lady. Uh, and she claims... Why does it always butt up against weird neo-Nazi shit? Just once. I'd like to hit conspiracy bedrock and there isn't anti-Semitism or weird white supremacy. They, they claim that is an alien species as well. I, and again, I think it's just the elites of the Atlanteans are pretending to be gods. But let me see if I can find one of the bird ones. A lot of these things are real ugly. I, I think that the different aliens are just the caste system. It's just a different... Uh, purposes that they served and they all got genetically spliced away from being humans. Alright, so this goat looking bird here, I hope you can see that. Uh, maybe that one is kind of like uh, Osiris or Horus right here. I think it was Osiris one too. No, nah, looks like Osiris is more humanoid. Uh, one of them was blue. That's an Andromedan according to this. This guy here and Alex uh, Collier is another one. Okay, I think I'm done with this guy. We get it. Oh, this just had an incredible graphic. I needed you to see the incredible graphics on display here. Are you ready? Are you ready? I don't think you're ready for, for the passion that was put into this. We have that incredibly symbolic that seems very lightly symbolic. Been found guilty by the international birdemic level effects. How dare you? Don't disrespect birdemic like that. Justice court by proxy of conducting genocide on Gaza. Sure, they found Israel guilty. Oh, another conspiracy theorist. Great. That's good for the world. I'm good, bullet, bullet, Bill. How are you? World. What does the book of Revelation say? It says the dragon went after the woman. That woman is us, folks. 
Check out Revelations chapter- the, con the use of AI is getting worse and worse in the conspiracy community, and it's so unnerving. Chapter 12, verse 17. I feel like it's creating a whole new genre of aesthetic, and it's just conspiracy core. Like, what the fuck? You know the part that it says- Profane Priestess says, you're pretty close with your assumptions, Ari. Uh, why many, though not all, Egyptian deities were depicted as animals. The skills of the animal were said to be useful in the god's work, its portfolio, to use the D&D term. Anubis, god of the dead, is a jackal because jackals eat carrion and are more common in Egypt than corvids, crows and ravens. Oh, that makes sense. Hmm. Is the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood? Oh yeah, that's bad AI. Blood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood? That's in Revelations chapter 12, verse 15. There is no mistake that the mission to take down Israel was called El Aswa Flood. Why? Because this was the spark that ignited World War III. As we all know, the allies to Hamas are Iran, who is allied with Russia. Oh. Or, but what are we going to do? Hello, folks. Wes Truther here. In 1969, Congress passed into law the Chemical and Biological Warfare Program. That's USC Code 50, Chapter 32. It's a bio and chemical weapons, and it's for the awakening public and the citizens, the people that live in the United States. It, law enforcement and military and all the alphabet soup gangs, they're going to use... Alphabet soup gangs? ...this against... The older people, the knowledgeable people, the awaken or awakening people. That's what that biologic... The books behind him say the world is flat and... I can't read the other one. ...and chemical warfare program is all about. Congress said... Chemical fear-mongering on the bingo card. ...that it was a... that it was for defense... I'm gonna rescue that plushie. It will be mine. I will save it and it will receive many cuddles. That's... It's for defense, but the defense is against the American people. That's what it's all about. Like I said, it's aggressive, it's toxic, it's intrinsic, it's lethal. And Congress claimed it was for defense, but it's for defending law enforcement and military and government people from the people of this country. That's what it's defend. That's no, when he says alphabet soup people, uh, he could, I guess, be talking about LGBT. But usually when I've heard that particular, they're talking about three-letter agencies, the FBI, the CIA, the DOJ, etc. That's what it's created for. And who is now a military organization? It's always been a military organization. Nope, the World Health Organization is the World Health Organization. But it's out in the open now. And they're going to use guns, intimidation of imprisonment, and everything. They'll seize your properties and everything for not allowing yourself to be euthanized. Oh. So I'm telling you, folks, you better arm... Assuming he's an anti-vaxxer. ...yourselves, and you better be ready to make a little stand. FBI, is this a threat on the bingo card? At your own residence. Because there ain't nobody in this country sticking together mentally enough to assemble to do something about it. It's going to be every man for himself. Y'all want to go to prison? You want to be euthanized? Then, you know, that choice is yours. You want to die on your feet or die on your knees? I probably shouldn't answer that. Globalhealing.com. That's something that everyone should look up. You should save it to your computer. You should browse around on it. <laughs> Excuse me, and see what the natural remedies and healing products are. And I'm going to tell you now, don't you overlook what I'm saying. Congress is the enemy. Congress is the ruination of the United States of America. Congress is the enemy of the Constitution, which is the executive authority. No president, no sheriff, no Supreme Court judge or panel of judges has authority over the Constitution. Have you read the Constitution? Because, like, constitutional amendments are a thing. 
Judicial review is a thing which wasn't originally in the Constitution, but it's pretty firmly established at this point. What? Marcus Drake, I'm sorry for this one, but you did pay me the bits. Euthanize me, Daddy. Ooh, ooh. <sighs> so when law enforcement infringes on your constitutional rights, don't give up your damn guns and think you're going to go to court and settle anything. That is the most chicken shit and stupidest daggone thing that someone... If you've got guns, what well, get you... Overthought with 100 bits says, Oppress me, please. Ooh, ooh, I promise I won't fight too hard for my freedom. You don't need guns. You're sorry, are you, though? Are you? Avila, 2022 with 24 months, says, April is my anniversary as well as my birthday. Oh, when's your birthday? As if you're not... And happy second anniversary. I'm gonna use them. God damn. Snake venoms. Fauci put the gain of function. Let me tell you what I'm thinking about it. President Trump wrote one, just one check, for $6 trillion to the COVID vaccine research. You know, before COVID started yeah, in think, January of 2020, I don't think that number is correct. America had two and a half percent of America's rich people were billionaires. After just a little over one year, that two and a half percent of billionaires went to three and a half percent billionaires. I'm sorry, did he just say three percent of Americans are billionaires? It is not that high. There's, it's not that high. What are you talking about? Trump wrote checks for four hundred billion. Listen, they. I'm gonna tell you what. And where is Fauci after all of this? Trump knows. Gates knows. Y'all keep on, keep on praising Trump, thinking he's something good. There ain't a single one of them in there that's any damn good. That Dukakis guy from Florida, I think, or Ron Paul. That, that's it. That's. That's two leaders. That's two decent leaders right there. The book, I've just been, uh, 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 Mr. Blast sent me what that book is because you can actually read on it the uh, author, Britt Allen Tharp. Um, the book is Book One, Queen of the Gods. When a god steps out of line, a payment is due. Don't know anything about that. Fauci put the gain of function snake venoms in the hepatitis A and the hepatitis B vaccines. Anti-vax stuff is just the worst. Three percent of rich people? Mm. Uh, Lance with 100 bits says Dukakis and Paul? The man hasn't updated his candidate list in 10 years. And virus recovery act. He's going to tell us all about the alien artifacts he brought to this super soldier convention. Hi, everybody. I'm Johnny Delirious, master survivor, laboratory naturopathic doctor, and virus recovery expert and best selling author. Oh, uh, I bet he's I'm none here of those things. At the show, the Bio Expo, Bio Medical Show, and also the alien event. And uh, this is September uh, 15th uh, or 16th, September 16th, 2023. And one of the things I do is hair tissue mineral analysis as a naturopathic doctor. But That's what I'm showing here are jade artifacts from Lemuria that are over 26,000 years old. The reason I say 26,000... those who don't know, Lemuria is another... Sort of like Atlantis, a fictional lost city, lost continent, lost island. The years is because we did have doesn't have architecture. Yes, did some of the organic material that we've dug out between some of the cracks on the pieces, so we know that whenever it got covered. I'm trying to figure out if he's the scammer or if he got scammed. That they are twenty six thousand years ago, but they're probably much older than that. <laughs> 
So because these are clearly like kitschy touristy things that someone sold him, right? And told him, no, these are thou these are twenty six thousand years old, but clearly they were made like in the last five years. <laughs> like they look like lawn ornaments. All this is made of pure jade, and some of it has inlaid work, and this is from Lemuria or the medicated person. Let me check your bingo card. Reptilians doesn't understand architecture, free space, AI, flat earth. You did it, medicated person. Hooray. Let me write your name down. Give me one second. Where is the file? So that is our winner for the day. Congrats, medicated person, for your a bingo win. Let me know when you would like that. Um distributed to you medicated person okay the land of move this particular piece is like uh, uh what we call a, a amulet or a sacrificial um sword orion cooper says lumeria originally was originally a somewhat scientific hypothetical landmass for why lemurs exist in Madagascar, India, and Australia. Um, it was not true, but it wasn't totally insane. Similar to, like, the Nibiru Planet X thing, it started as an actual hypothesis to try and explain some gravitational stuff that wasn't understood about the solar system, but then as time went on, we understood it better, and we're like, oh, okay, you don't need that tenth planet necessarily, you know but part of a ceremony conspiracy theorists will latch on to debunked old hypotheses and stuff not used as a sacrifice or harm but used as a ceremony but each piece like this sword shows a story it tells a story and so like a picture tells a thousand stories a sculpture will tell i mean a picture tells a thousand words a sculpture will tell a million words this is solid jade, and then it's got the abalone oh. here. It's got what I call jasper here. Oh, he got so grifted. Holy shit. Here. And then the Who sold him this, and how much did they sell it for? Abalone. There, there's no way you could duplicate this piece. This is... You, you could. You could. Sodalite. The only way you can do this is with holographic technology that we don't have the ability or insight... To, no, if it does exist, it's in the dark projects, James. And this, like I said, was it looks like something I'd buy at Sleeping Tiger Imports. It's about a particular, you could call him a shaman, you could call him a priest, or you could call, but this is a ceremonial sword and it depicts a story like every piece from Lemuria, where these came from, or the land of Mu. This particular piece is about what I call the mother and child reunion, and she is with her daughter here and training her to be a mother. So as a mother training her daughter to be a mother, that's why they both have the bowls. And there, there's so much uh, of the story in each piece. And jade, by the way, comes in so many different colors. It can come in red, blue, green, white. The Chinese value the white jade. Um, so basically, this is a green piece. This is a gray colored jade. But this one is, is green with gold inlay in different places. Again, the mother and child reunion, she's teaching her daughter about what it takes to be a good mother and, and, and food and feeding and stuff like that. Uh, I'll show you the back of the piece that I didn't show you before in the detail of this. See, she's got her arm around the daughter, and around her arm is more of the gold inlay. Again, this just looks like a touristy thing that if you went to another country, they'd try and sell you. Like as a, hey, buy this. It seems, you know. Is there felt on the bottom? It looks like the bottom is felt on it to make it non-slip. The ancient art of felting the bottom of your decor. And all her headdress 
here that goes all the uh, way down as part of her outfit. So looks like resin to you. Yeah, I'm not. I don't know rocks, but it doesn't. I don't know. It looks weird to me, but I don't have enough knowledge to say that that's not jade. I don't know. I don't know rock stuff. I can't lie and pretend to know minerals. I don't know. I have more pieces. Jade is an umbrella for two different types of stone. Okay. That I'm going to bring out at the March show. And these are all the only ones I could get here at this time. I've got small aliens in a jar, and I've got their ships, James. And uh, the real ships, because these ships are only this big, the aliens are only this tall, and I can pick up... Oh my god, like the Twilight Zone episode, The Visitors. The ship with two fingers, and it's metal, but I can't scratch it, I can't dent it, but yet I can pick it up with two fingers. It's so light. Give me a hammer, I'll dent it. So the, all these pieces come from the same area. And then... Is he trying to grip people? The fact that he's saying he tried to dent it and couldn't is giving me more grifter vibes. Also, he's call, claiming him he's a he's a he's a what did he call naturopathic doctor or something? Thanks. There's Dracos. There's the invaders. Thank you. Grays, but they got their own nest. They don't bother us. We don't bother them. Doesn't look like Jade from the pieces you've handled, but don't know for sure. Mm. And um, so basically, I'm the one that's bringing them out, and I'm going to be working with James. We're going to try to get down there and film some of this. I don't have to talk get... about the ship so bad. I have to use the bathroom again. Sorry. I've been, I feel like, urinating a lot. I will return. Be right back. Um, Hooligan Comedy with a $5 super chat says, I almost never watch live, but my chronic low blood pressure is killing me today, and your streams are a wonderful comfort food. Thank you, Hannah. Sorry you're not feeling well today. Uh, hope your blood pressure gets better, and, uh, glad you can be here. Thank you very much. Fenikagami says, Hello all, it'll never cease to amaze me how much proud ignorance is on display from a crowd that used do your own research as a mantra. The belief that gold was a universal standard is an easily debunked claim the second you research outside of Western ethnocentric history. In Japan, for example, while they had a gold coin called a Ryo, Ryo um, that predates the yin, what actually backed the re Ryo was rice, like most currency throughout Japanese history. Hmm get it on footage for you james but this particular one is a represent okay i'm excited to hear him talk about this ship because this ship looks like an obvious lawn ornament right like i feel like if i went to a like a, a home and garden store this would be in the garden section as like a kitschy thing to, to put in your garden of a ship and inside on some of this and get it on footage sorry for i you, gotta james. see if he said it was a real shipper but this particular one is a representative of a ship. Okay, representative. He doesn't think this is a real ship. Ship. And inside, it has pilots of the ship. Again, that's this a... This is solid jade. I'm 80% sure that's a lawn ornament. And in the ship, it shows... Hold on. I gotta see if I can find this. Uh, UFO lawn uh, ornament. I'm going to see if I can find that exact lawn ornament. I don't know if I'll be able to, 
Oh my god, it's all AI shit. Why is a Google search is ruined? Oh, fuck. Uh... Damn. So far, I don't see that specific one, but I see things similar to it. <laughs> Damn. I want to find it so bad. The pilots. And this is very heavy. It is a pretty this, cute lawn ornament. This is over 60 kilos. Or whatever it is. Many of the UFOs you see have these energy... Three energy. Maybe someone actually did just do this and carved it themselves, because it doesn't look like machined necessarily, not like on an assembly line. It looks like someone actually took tools to this, probably power tools, but like... ...systems on the bottom that propel and provide the anti-gravity. So, that is... Rep you know what? You're right. It might be a bird bath. Let me try that. UFO bird bath. Try that. No, oh, I'm getting even less. That's a shame. It's bird bath, two words. Let's try that. That didn't help. Has Google gotten worse? Like, I swear. It's gotten way worse in like the last year. Presented. Plus, the pilots are represented inside, and then they have a cover on it with the energy, uh, another energy generator here. And this jade is, you can see through this jade right here. You can see through that. This is abalone, and this is holographic technology. So the technology was made, uh, I mean, the piece was made at first in the imaginary state, which we see when we're inventing something, or or even if it's just some, oh, if I put that in my car and do that tomorrow, I can get it all done. Wherever that realm is, is where these actually came from. And then they pull it. Toriador says, wow, little Billy did an amazing job on his middle school clay art project. Put down in their extraordinary way with their holographic technology, and it manifests in jade and abalone just as it is, because the workmanship on it is undisputable. It can't be duplicated. It can't be duplicated. And there's you could, you could absolutely have that duplicated. And I don't trust anybody to test them. We've had laboratory tests. We have university tests. We know that the organic material in it is older than twenty-six thousand years. So that I know for sure as a fact. The what pieces organic themselves material? are much older. What? Right now, I can say that I got them south of the border. And because <laughs> I got... <laughs> oh, he got so grifted. He got so fucking grifted. That's a shame. got them south of the border. I'm working with a particular country where they come from. Toriador says nobody can remake them except for the Chinese manufacturer. I bought a lot of a hundred of these at. <laughs> I need to sell. And they're. I I think he got grifted. I I I am now of the opinion that he has maybe gotten grifted himself. Military Could and be officials wrong. allow me. Maybe to... he's just a grifter, but he kind of seems like he believes it. To take him out, because the people I'm working for only trust me because I helped them recover from some illnesses that the doctors couldn't help them with because I'm a laboratory naturopathic doctor. So I've developed this trust. They call the fuck is a laboratory naturopathic doctor? They called me. They called me. They say, Johnny, you're the man. We want you. And so Dr. Johnny, come down here. And they don't want this publicly to come out any other way except with me because they... Uh, because of my work as a laboratory naturopathic doctor for over 40 years, I don't sell anything else but my hair analysis. That's it. And because of that hair analysis and all the work I've done over the years... He does hair analysis? It's a little ironic. I've developed uh, a reputation for sticking straight to the facts because I'm a lab guy. I deal with facts, data, and statistics. So basically... That's why 
I'm the one that brings them out. I've got, I'm a radio show host, I'm a best-selling author, and I have a public face anyway, so they're letting me bring them out to the public because they know I understand what the pieces mean. Each piece tells a story. Like this particular piece, he's like a shaman. And this is the different times he's had to go through experiences. It shows his picture here. He's at the top. And then this here is telling different times when he had experience. <laughs> he snips hair. If you have a better way to analyze hair, you let me know. Just with okay. people. And there's different stones. Being My nose is science. Represented inside this jade piece. So they all tell a story and a history. <laughs> taste. Okay, I don't think I want to taste people's hair. I'm good. And a lesson to be learned. And that's why this, we have many pieces called, I call the mother and child reunion. So this mother and child reunion. Do you know where we get the certificate to show a radio host that can be trusted with sacred relics? Your printer? Yeah, this is solid jade and it's heavy. It's about, oh, maybe 60 pounds or 80 pounds. But you can see this is her daughter. This is the mother. They both are. I don't believe that's 80 pounds. I don't even believe it's 60 pounds. I don't believe that. They're holding bowls. She's teaching her it, how- He's not holding it like it weighs 60 or 80 pounds. To be a mother. So that's the big story here. And I'm gonna put this- He's holding it like it's maybe 30 or 40 pounds. Down. Being solid jade is very heavy. Tops. You gotta go to the gym. This, this, this is a ship. And the ship is recording. I've got many a mother-child reunions. And I've got many ships of this. I've got real ships, too. And <laughs> He has many, and you can have one now for nineteen ninety nine. Um, but they're allowing me to do this because I understand what the pieces mean. When I went down several times, I tested the pieces for energy. I had a... I just noticed the sign in the back that says hair tissue mineral analysis. The unknown science revealed. Golf meter. I had electric, you know, recording. I had um, other frequency uh, detection. And some of these pieces, like crystal skulls, I've seen over 500. I mean, I've seen over 50 crystal skulls. And He's been in over 500 street fights. That some of them have some weird Canadian guy. Profane Priestess says the minerals referred to as jade are very rare and valuable. In many cases, it was valued more highly than gold because mining it's difficult and, to my understanding, it's somewhat temperamental as a medium. If these were the real if these were real jade, they'd be worked they'd be worth tens, if not hundreds of thousands on a black market by uh, by my guess. If these were real, no collector with any understanding of what they own would sell them. Oh. Good to know. Guess he's full of shit then. Thought they were real aliens. It's a bummer. Toriador says, I'm sorry, but I want to know what the other booths behind him are for. Those lights are catchy, and I want to know what kind of free energy device they came up with. <laughs> I agree. One of these days, I just need to find one of these conventions and just go. Let's do a live stream from one. Why not? Energy, and some of them don't. What's on your. Fenikagami says, I regularly load 50-pound bags into a truck for work. There's no way this scrawny dude lifts and moves a statue that weighs 80 pounds like that. Yeah, I used to. This was before my HRT days. This was over a decade ago. So the, the hormones had not reduced my upper body strength to nil. Um, but I used to do maintenance and uh, truck for a restaurant I worked at. So I had to, like, when the truck came, you know, take all the boxes and put them in the freezer or wherever they went. I'm okay at guesstimating how much something weighs based on the strain someone else is using. It's a useful skill. Unusual is I picked up radio frequency yeah, from sucks. many of them, but yet no electrical frequency, which is like unheard of. That's like turning on a light. You know there's electricity going through to turn on the light, but, you know, the same thing. If the light came on and there's no electricity, you could say, how could that be done? If there's radio frequency and there's no electricity, but this is advanced alien technology. But in Lemuria, 
they were a multi-galactic civilization, a multi-racial civilization. I'm gonna see what happens they, later. Civilization, the you, you can go to my way. You can go to my the Kusauts. I am the uh, expert in our ancient civilization from. Oh, I've seen this guy. I think he's been on the Super Soldier channel before. He was one of the guys who was wearing the weird wire helmets that one time. Yeah. Lemuria, Atlantis, and also Agatha. Cicero Fields, thanks for a seven stream streak. And the uh, Raman civilization, the U civilization, Ioni civilization. Pretty much the entire planetary or galactic uh, history is also been in great my knowledge. That woman is the same phone as me. What we have here, what we have is called the Apnuk Kaki. It's known as Apnuk Kaki. It is the Christian representing the Atlantum. The, both the Atlantean and Lemurian origin. The Aknuk Kanki, and this is what we call the engineer of the sun god. I normally read the inscription here to show the engineer of the sun god or the builder of the portal. This is represent this culture. He's basically is uh, in nature originally is called what we call Atlantium. Atlantis engineer that being a uh, him that the, the Atlas King sent their army to basically South America to reestablish a stronghold to make sure the civilization not destroy when their war with their Lumerian culture. And the president, the, the one that is he's from Atlanta. Oh wow, he really the, goes on on this for a while. To the scientists. Oh wow, he's still talking. He talks for like 30 minutes. God damn. People, they evolved it on this planet and they at first, at first they were underneath. They were so, they, they, wow, what is this? It is belong to the planet called Marduk, okay. which is a blow up planet that was destroyed by uh, the Nibiru planet, an artificial mm -hmm. planet built by the God Federation and run it by the time it was uh, Pleiadian uh, people, you know, that belonged to the uh, Galactic Alliance. And they. Oh, he really took over this video, huh? <laughs> Um, Toriador says, as someone that goes to conventions very regularly, I'm so curious to know what the nightlife of the conspiracy conferences are like. Can you imagine these people drunk or all at dinner together, or worse, room parties or adult parties? Adult parties happen at conventions? Degenerates. <laughs> Bittergrin says, conspiracy day at Antique Roadshow? Ooh, that would be fun. The United States of America, the great state. Welcome to the Restituto Orbis channel. We're going to explore the origins of the United States, the world's hyperpower. How did this colonial breakaway from the British Empire become the hyperpower that it is today? World War II is a big part of it. Come join me as we explore the American Republic. This isn't an ordinary fight. Fight, fight. This is a fight between the powers of light and darkness. Darkness, darkness, darkness. We've extensively explored the United States in our explorations, and we're going to examine this realm map from 1875 when it was composed. And it was originally composed to celebrate the centennial of the United States. And when, you might be surprised to know that the United States was already completely divided out by 1875 when this map was made, and it includes the United States and the Dominion of Canada at the time. And we can see that it includes the wondrous infrastructure that had to be completed to support the railroad. Everywhere at the same time, the United States was rapidly constructed, and here we see an image of the differing United States Capitol Dome, supposedly. It's also intriguing. I don't know what the supposedly is there for. Probably Tartaria? Begin to realize that the geographical definitions of all the states seem to have been defined. And we had many centennials and world's fairs that had already transpired at this time, according to the official history. We can see that the fine geographical definitions of the states were already established. It's almost as though there was some sort of preconceived plan. And indeed, the only states not divided in this map are the Dakotas into North and South Dakota. <laughs> 
there's there's a lot why states are the shapes that they are is such a big topic there's an entire tv show that ran multiple seasons called how the states got their shapes it's very interesting it's an interesting topic but first of all the states here their shapes are not all correct for instance on the in the west there's a some fucked up stuff going on like montana and 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 idaho look fucky something's off on that and I'm sure there are things that are off elsewhere other than just the Dakotas and stuff. But I, I, the idea that he thinks that there aren't a variety of things that went into the shapes of the different states of the United States frustrates me. But everything else is as we know it now. We looked at certain states, such as Georgia, and we consider the early history of Georgia, namely the capital of Atlanta. Atlanta did not exist, really, prior to 1800 at all. It was a rail stop that was suddenly built up, destroyed in the Civil War by the Union Army, and then quickly rebuilt after the Civil War. It's an all-too-common story that we have. And indeed, most of the cities that we've explored in the United States didn't even exist before 1800, or they were simple settlements or forts, such as Nashville in Tennessee, another city that grew rapidly in the 1800s. And we've explored elsewhere across the eastern United States, such as Louisville, where we've seen wondrous architecture and, again, another city that rapidly developed and grew in the 1800s. And I don't want to forget to mention Cincinnati, one of my favorite explorations, where we saw a city that we're told was made by Germans, and Indianapolis in Indiana, a city that seems to be a terminus point. And, of course, who can forget Chicago, where they had the Great World's Fair and several fires. So many cities that developed in the 1800s to include Milwaukee with this wondrous courthouse and the large convent, visible from the river very easily. I'm still trying to get, I'm assuming he's trying to gesture towards Tartaria. Other than that, I'm not and going sure. over to Minnesota in Minneapolis and St. Paul, two cities that grew very quickly. And indeed, many of these cities grew rapidly. We have courthouses and we have Rochester in Minnesota, where the Mayo Clinic developed in this wondrous courthouse in Austin, Minnesota. Of course, we see the brutalist example that remains to this day. And looking across this map, we can see that all these structures were completed at the same time. State capitals, county courthouses, infrastructure, railways, all done within the 1800s. Our <laughs> at the same time, names a century. Is a century all the same time? A century is the same time? Wow, chat, can you believe that everything I've ever done in my life has happened all at the exact same time, and also the next 60-something years will be happening at the exact same time? What? You listed a century! It's a century! Favorite Iowa State Capitol, or at least my favorite, maybe you don't like it, and that's entirely okay. And yet... The presence of Iowa State On a human time scale, a century's a decent bit of time. State College at Ames. And yet Ames, Iowa is not depicted on this map. Especially by like the 1800s. Sure, maybe like, like depending on the area, a hundred years might not make a lot of difference a long time ago when progress and things were a little slower. But by the 1800s? Yeah, there's a lot of change. Yeah, even though it was originally constructed as a rail stop. Very interesting. We go out to Nebraska on the Transcontinental Railroad and we can see the many communities that were along it and maybe even see Gene Hackman when he thought he was dead, but he was actually just in Nebraska. I don't have anything against Nebraska. We can see, though, that the Dakotas have no infrastructure depicted in them, no railroads, and yet they rapidly grew. Recall our exploration Dakotas. of Mount Rushmore and Devil's Tower and seeing the top of Devil's Tower in what is today Wyoming. And even back when this map was constructed, it was very clearly Wyoming. So many interesting things and wondrous achievements in a short 100-year period. And over here on this map, we even have some population figures and railway distribution in terms of how much mileage in each state. It's a very impressive set of achievements that's all illustrated on one map. Remember that the United States was a breakaway colonial possession of the British Empire. There was no reason for this wondrous experiment at least we're told it was an experiment in government to suddenly succeed that's a way that it's described Seed. like yeah they were they were they were trying to move away from monarchy and into enlightenment ideals again not <laughs> not by our modern standards obviously they were uh racist and white supremacists and stuff but like 
least they were trying, I guess, if you want to call it that, but calling it an experiment, I assume he's gesturing towards, like, a literal experiment by scientists, which I've heard them say before. Probing Priestess says, Part of why America boomed so much was that it industrialized late as well. You actually want to arrive late to the party when it comes to stuff like industry. The later you arrive, the more you can learn from earlier mistakes. America didn't join the party until the second industrial revolution. The later you arrive, the more you can benefit from other people doing the hard intellectual work for you. Yeah, that makes sense. And not only did it succeed, it rapidly grew in under a hundred years. All this infrastructure, all these bridges, all these railroads, all these state capitals, even the U.S. state capital, the courthouses, and let's not forget the pop- Does he think that there was, like, one guy building all these? Does he understand that over a hundred years it was the populations in those areas doing that? Along with, like, workers from areas that were brought in? Like, does he- A hundred years is a lot of time to build a lot of stuff when that is your job! Population, and you can certainly go back and look at the population video to see how unprecedented the growth of population in the United States is. Many will try to explain it by simply saying it was because of immigration. We also have our early governors and some very interesting early governors, such as C.C. Carpenter, the governor of Iowa in the 1870s. Isn't it intriguing that they wanted to make sure everybody knew who the governor was and what their term was, even during this time frame? Why would that be weird? You, you would. What? You would know the governor of your state if you lived in a... That's... Do you... Like, if he thinks an ain't... Does he think in ancient times people didn't know their local or regional governors? Like, I'm thinking even, like, Roman or fucking Greece. Like, people would know, like, oh, yeah, the... The, the governor of the area. Like, people know the people who are involved in their lives. Thank you. Love you. And who is the individual who made this map? Gaylord Watson? Did Gaylord Watson appear like Ben Stiller? Because we don't have an image of Gaylord Watson, which I find quite... He's aware that Gaylord is an actual name, right? Like, it's not just a joke that was in that movie. Like, that's a real name. Quite fascinating, and yet... This... There's a city in Michigan called Gaylord. Like, it is a real name, <laughs> historically. This was an official map that was logged in the Library of Congress. So what to make of this, this impressive map that shows us the incredible achievements of the American Republic in under a hundred years? It's very impressive if it's taken at face value. But is this really to be taken at face value? Let's examine what the United States has become. And we went from a backwater colony to the world power, and that's depicted... You'd be more likely to know your local lord and less likely to know the name of your king or emperor. Yeah. Here in... Probably gonna know the name of the guy that collects the taxes. <laughs> the Unified Combatant Command's area of responsibility, where the United States Department of Defense has divided up every geographical area in the known land, the world, the realm, whatever you want to call it, into geographical areas of responsibility, even violating the Posey Comitatus Act, which says that military cannot be used in a law enforcement role, but we're told that you what? This Northern Command was a practical necessity due to matters of national security, and therefore it exists. So regardless of concerns in earlier American times, they have Northern Command. They have a command that encompasses every single geographical area. And the intention behind this is so that there can be a division and a unified chain of command for the employment of American military forces anywhere in the land. Indeed, the United States is the only military in the world that divides up the entire world into geographical areas of responsibility. I would imagine we're the only ones that have the level of global hegemony to allow bases in so many nations that would cause a necessity to have a breakdown of power structures like this into regions. It's all like we have bases in almost ev like like if it's a country that we're even kind of neutral with, we probably have a base there. Also the only military in the world, as far as we know, that has what's called expeditionary capability. The ability to deploy military forces to any point in the land. They even have a space command area. Now, whatever your opinion on this, this is quite an amazing change from what was just a group of colonies that was considered a backwater area. And Yes, like that's... It is, but there's also reasons that we can understand that it happened, like actual historical reasons. There's even a book that's been written called Flight of the Eagle by this particular individual, Conrad Black, Lord Black, who is considered somewhat controversial himself. But whatever your opinion on the individual, this is the only novel or book that 
considers the strategy from America's rise. And we look at the founding fathers of the United States, the founding fathers which seem to have even come to a mythical status. And officially we're told the founding fathers were the signers of the Declaration of Independence, the composers of the Constitution, although we specify things a little bit more. We have George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, James Madison, Thomas Jefferson, and a few others. Oh, I don't want to forget Alexander Hamilton. But these were the individuals who had these wondrous thoughts of creating a republic, a democracy even though things started to change. If we look at the five pillars of the original American Republic, we have faith in God, respect for, <laughs> what? for the Bible, sinfulness of human nature, Christian virtue necessary, and government exists to protect faith and freedom. That's very different than the other Fucking aspects or perceptions that we have of the modern American state. Where we Weird say how that doesn't get brought up in the Constitution even a little bit. And in fact, the Constitution directly says the opposite of that in the sense that there can be no state religion there could be no establishment of religion or the prevention thereof we believe in the separation of church and state but of course we understand that things were very different people thought and operated very differently at that time at least that's what we're told regardless though we have this conflicting account with the nascency of the United States. We also have many of these mythological images and these symbols that are so powerful. Lady Columbia, the Statue of Liberty, Uncle Sam. And yet when you look at a lot of- Every nation state throughout history has had symbols that it associates with itself. The artwork that we've seen in many of these wonderful- That's part of nation building and identity building involves creating national symbols. Like, that's a thing. Like, that's not nefarious. It's just how humans think and create identities is by associating symbols with them to give body to the formless social construct, right? It sort of, in your mind, gives form and sense to something that is sort of nonsensical but is necessary in many cases, or at least how we function, right? creating the concepts of countries and nation states and governance, right? These are abstracts that we make less abstract by concretizing them through symbols. ...structures that were constructed in the United States, we see many mythical impersonations and even what would be considered folk art, such as this image where we see people paying their taxes. And I thought it was very fitting since it's April in the United States, and everyone in the United States knows what April means, unless of course you fall for an extension. The symbolism is very interesting though with Lady Columbia and the aspects of innate wisdom. It almost reflects something that we could consider from the Greco-Roman pantheon of deities. Why do we see this so present in the United States? And indeed, in all the state capital explorations that we've done, we've seen some sort of reference to this symbolism, not symbology, but symbolism. And we've even seen it in many county courthouses and in other areas across the land. Indeed, every soldier and sailor's monument that we've looked at shows this symbolism to an extent. But what is this really reflecting? It's almost as though this is pointing back to another period of American history. Now, of course, we'll be told, no, that's not true. It's merely a sign of symbols that alludes to the myth and the folk art that represents what the United States was truly about. Consider the Lewis and Clark expedition. The United States doubled in size when it had the Louisiana Purchase, when it purchased that area from France. Thanks, Napoleon. And President Jefferson sent Lewis and Clark, two U.S. Army officers, on an expedition to the Pacific to map out the terrain. Oddly enough, the French, who had been there for hundreds of years... Had we are doing tinfoil bingo. Someone already won, though, but we are playing for fun. ...never bothered to map it out. Or perhaps Napoleon didn't want to throw maps in the deal and just wanted to sell the land as fast... They were looking for the Northwest... a Northwest Passage... They weren't just, ma they were mapping it. They were doing surveying work, obviously, but they were, one of their primary goals was to try and search for a Northwest Passage, which turned out to not exist, unfortunately. Fast as he could. Although it's now understood that what selling the land meant was that the United States could actually go and, how shall we say, occupy it. But we'll just call it what it is, conquer it. As there were Native Americans that were there, and we have the account of their guide, Sacagawea. And there were many other guides that supposedly took part in the Lewis and Clark expedition. But what was the real intention behind it? Do you just send a small party to go and explore and- They're also disappointed they didn't find mammoths. I'm disappointed every day I don't see a mammoth too.
actually bypass a lot of the land that you're in or were they looking for something else? There's a lot of anomalies when you go through this particular path that these individuals traveled on. And what's the real historiosity behind this? Now, there's a lot of debate between the purposes of this expedition. It has been agreed upon. But if you ever go to Montana, you'll find that there's a lot of interesting sites that are there. Now, of course, we'll be told that these are just simple natural rock formations and that Montana is a very beautiful state. And there's certainly no arguing that point. Yet, if you ever travel through it, you'll find that there's many of these odd examples with rocks or rocks that some might be for. Did he think that it would CSI enhance when he zoomed into this this far? I've, it's a mountain or something, but I can't really tell what I'm looking at. The resolution's garbage. Given for thinking are not necessarily built by nature. There's many supposed survivors. I hate Twitch times, too. If they get a mammoth and they can make me like a... Like at the beginning of the Jurassic Park book, um, Hammond has created like like little elephants for pets. Someone make me a tiny mammoth. I would like a tiny pet mammoth. Having maps and first-hand accounts of the Lewis and Clark expedition, such as this, well, less than uh, well-kept manner of notes in a map. Thank you, Baja. That gives you the idea of what their expedition was really about and what they were focused on. And then you have other maps that were obviously more well decorated and how shall we say well composed with more effort being put into scientific and accuracy with the distances and the locations and in terms of what they're researching this is the sergeant floyd memorial and a very strange obelisk that exists near sioux city iowa man they really don't like obelisks and you might be surprised to know that there is something that is a small if they ever make a monument of me, they won't. I'm not doing anything of note in my life. I've already decided. But if I did for some reason, don't make it an obelisk. That's so lazy. That's lazy. The first person who made an obelisk was probably like, that's pretty good. And then everyone else did obelisks. Stop it. If you're gonna, if you're gonna make a monument to me, no obelisk, okay? Create something original, not just a big pole smaller version of an obelisk of the Great Washington Monument in Sioux City, Iowa. Oddly enough, uh, there's still the little commemoration that we have on it. They call it a shaft, and it's to mark the burial place of Sergeant Charles Floyd of the Lewis and Clark Expedition. Died in his country service. Toriador says mammoths just in time for mammalian zoonic avian flu. Hooray! Hmm. Buried 1804. And then we see that graves of such men... For those who didn't hear... Um, avian flu has been depicted, uh, 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 rather detected in, uh, cows, and apparently someone caught it from beef that they ate. So can you imagine if we get a pandemic that requires Republicans to cut back on red meat? I'm sure they'd take that great and not make any conspiracy theories about that at all. And her pilgrim shrines, no class or creed can find. I'm genuinely concerned about that if that kicks up. If there is some sort of, like, red meat or beef-born pathogen, Republicans are so fucking weird in their culture warrior shit right now that they are going to get so sick. <laughs> okay, sorry. Maybe not beef they ate. It, it was contact from cattle, so it may have been a farmer. If it gets in the fucking food supply, I'm gonna lose it, though. Obviously, it would be dangerous, but mostly the response is going to be a disaster. And it was erected in 1900 by the Floyd Memorial. I can already see it. They'd be like, they're trying to get us to eat bugs. They're trying to get us to eat their lab meat. They're trying to get us to not eat meat. That's the food my food eats. Blah, 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 blah. It'd be a nightmare. The Association of the United States and the state of Iowa. Very interesting. Again, an almost mythical association with this incredible structure that still exists near Sioux City. They built this in 1900. Well, how come every set of veterans, especially from the Great War and then the War to End All Wars, which is the same war in World War II, didn't get such wonderful monuments such as this? Well, did you say World War II didn't get monuments? This was Sergeant Floyd from the Lewis and Clark Expedition, and I suppose for some reason he deserved a great obelisk, and I'm certainly not denigrating the character of his service. I'm just saying it's a very impressive monument. Concerned or amused? I can be two things. For one single individual. Not more than that, though. Two things are my maximum amount of things I can be at once. And yet we do have some construction. And one of those slots is normally filled with cute, so.
construction photos of it, if you can call this a construction photo, maybe you can. There's some peculiarities with it where it shows them allegedly finishing constructing the top of the monument. You'd think there'd be a better quality photo in 1900, but I don't know, maybe they just didn't have a very good camera at the time. It's 1900! What do you mean? That's a perfectly fine photo for the year 1900! Asshole. Toriadora says, don't worry, it was in Australia, which isn't a real place. Oh, good. Good. That's not my hemisphere. And you can see, though, on the early maps at the end of the expedition, they still had Floyd's grave marked. Well, I guess the, the officers were very fond of this uh, Sergeant Floyd. You know, he really did his job quite well. I think of all the other non-commissioned officers, though, that have lost their lives in the service of the United States. There's many other aspects that reflect the myth and the folk art of the United States from the 1800s, and they give the impression of the concept of what was called Manifest Destiny. Yes, Manifest Destiny, apparently a strategic influence or a strategic goal of the United States to settle all the lands from the Atlantic to the Pacific. It's really hard to pinpoint, though, the actual origin of this strategy. You could almost say that it almost seemed preordained, and indeed, Manifest Destiny almost says it's preordained. Like, sure, but that doesn't make it true. You're describing a general belief that was held amongst many peoples in America at the time, right? That doesn't make it true? And, indeed, the individual that... Lance, with 100 bits, says, Doing a whataboutism about soldiers' memorials is so weird. <laughs> I'd agree. Coin the term... We don't actually have a picture of him. We just have a sketch drawing of Mr. John O'Sullivan. I find that very interesting that the individual... Again, what year does he think this was? ...individual that coined the term for a mythical strategic expansion westward. And we do have the same kind of symbolism that accompanies it with deities. And symbolism isn't... Symbolism isn't evil. Language is symbolism. The way we communicate is often through symbolism. And the overwatching of the settlers as they moved west into areas that were untamed with infinite amounts of resources and land. At least that's what we'll be expected to believe. And it's rather fascinating that on many of these images you'll see trains and tracks, and then you'll also see trains that are traveling across open land without tracks. So is that to give us the impression that they had to build the train tracks rather rapidly, or was it just artistic license? Not really sure, but it's interesting that that's what we have. We have a lot of paintings and a lot of mythology to the, that accompanies this. Even though the camera had been invented and was fully in use during the Civil War, although we always lament our complete lack of combat photographs, that doesn't necessarily prove... You couldn't have combat photographs because combat is in motion and the cameras of the period required you to be still for very long periods of time. If you tried to take a photograph of a battle with a camera during the Civil War, it would have just been blurs. It would have been nothing. It would have been nonsense. Toriador says mythology. Parks and Rec, every mural in Pawnee. <laughs> the magician one, the magician one's, I think, my favorite. Let me find the magician one. Hold on. There it is. They burned the magician at the stake in the 1970s. <laughs> That's my favorite one. <sighs> Never disprove anything any more than the lack of photographs that really display manifest destiny really prove or disprove anything. Of course, people say that if you just and have an image of yeah. a small western town or one of those shack towns of wood in South Dakota, which we've explored and <laughs> we have some interesting accounts behind, it gives another conflicting account. Ah, yes, Lady Columbia, who can forget? The great deity of the United States. It's very fascinating that uh, we have this Lady Columbia, or the Statue of the Republic, as it was called in the Chicago World's Fair in the early 1890s, once again, almost showing a completely different origin for the United States. Not a different origin, it's just a different symbol. Again, like a lot of the neoclassical architecture of Washington, D.C. or other civic buildings, it's an attempt to draw a comparison between classical societies and the United States. That's a common thing. Are we to simply take these as national symbols, or was there some other in yes. inspiration behind their creation? Why are they so pre the symbol one. prevalent, especially in buildings? It's one thing to do... Uncle Sam was a propaganda tool. I mean, so was Columbia. But Uncle Sam was during a war. Drawings and paintings of all this, but when you lay out... Actually, wait, no. Uncle Sam predates the war, right? At least somewhat. 
I don't remember. I feel like we had this discussion and I was corrected. Manifest destiny and the fact that all these structures are built very quickly in a short time frame in the 1800s, they all display these symbols. Now, of course, we have our theories that this could potentially represent a different origin for the United States. And perhaps that's what we really have to consider, that there is a different ideological origin. We'll be told that the roots of the American Republic or democracy actually come from the Greek originals or the practice of democracy in Athens and even the Roman Republic. And yet, oddly enough, we do see a combination of symbols that give us different indications for what Manifest Destiny really led to. And indeed, now the United States has a reputation for being a nation of excess, and yet it still claims to defend and support democracy. Here is a chart showing the estimated number of pioneers departing for Oregon, and you might recall our exploration of Seattle where we saw a very tremendous growth of population within that particular area of the country, the population growth of Seattle from 1860 to 1960. And we're supposed to take this mythological interpretation of paintings and drawings along with these official documents. I mean, it's obviously the paintings that you were showing are symbolic in nature. They're, they're, they're trying to show a spirit of the age. They're not a literal depiction. But, like, you can easily understand why the population of the West expanded because the government was incentivizing people to do so. They basically said, if you can go find land and stake it, it's yours. Imagine today if the government found an island somewhere. In this scenario, let's pretend there aren't already people living there to get, get, get the genocide grossness out of the way. Let's imagine there was actually an island and no one lived there. And they were like, we want to populate this island. Uh, anyone who goes there and stakes the land, it's yours. Free land? I can just have land and build a house on it? Oh, okay. Of course people are going to do that. Like, what? How could he not understand the incentive sets at play here and why people would do that? brochures that encouraged everybody to go west because you went through a hard journey to come to the united states from europe so you may as well go on another hard journey to go out west and tame this untamed land where there was no existing infrastructure Free line of 40 bits with a link oh it's all about uncle sam Let's see when does it say Image of Uncle Sam is based on a combination of two earlier American characters, Yankee Doodle and Brother Jonathan. Yankee Doodle was a derogatory term the British used for colonial Americans during the Revolutionary War. Brother Jonathan was a heroic character often featured in American folk tales and cartoons. Though the origin of the name Uncle Sam are subject to some dispute, most historians believe that the name came from a New York merchant named Sam Wilson, also known by his friends as Uncle Sam. Wilson supplied beef to American troops during World War the War of 1812. The barrels were stamped with the initials U.S. for United States, but many associated the initials with Uncle Sam Wilson. Over time, Uncle Sam became a synonym for the United States. Well, cool. There's the link in chat if you want to read the rest of it. It's interesting. I also didn't realize that Sam Wilson, the Falcon, was literally named entirely. I obviously knew Sam, but, like, I didn't realize Sam Wilson. Sure, at the time. And, indeed, the railroad map is quite limited in terms of how much railway mileage there was in the United States in 1875. Of course, in the next 30 years, they quickly increased that exponentially. And let's not forget our changing of the rail gauge of 11,500 miles of rail in 36 hours. But remember, it was the 1800s. There really weren't any logistical limitations. They managed to build all this infrastructure, all these railways, all of these bridges, and all of these tunnels in a very short amount of time, as the map does indicate. A hundred years on a human time scale, geologically, cosmologically. Yeah, that's a blink of an eye for humans. A hundred years is a long time. Eight, 1776 to 1876. Like, think about the difference between the year, the 1920s and now. That's a hundred years. A series of wonders. Um, wanted to show me something? Let's see what it is. Why do people get so butthurt about trans people when they don't even do anything to you? I don't see that much hate about bears. And bears fuck people up all the time! I see more people complaining about trans people than I do nuclear warfare! That's how they insult the nuclear 
Jedi Warfare or a huge W for trans people. People are scared of the power you hold. That was good. I enjoyed that. First achievements. A nation that not only was brought about by being a breakaway. Clyde, thanks for seven months as a member on YouTube. Says so been a lot longer than that. A colony. And consider the wars that this nation fought. The War of 1812, constant conflicts with Native Americans, the Mexican War, and the U.S. Civil War. We saw the United States military struggle quite a bit in the War of 1812. And Not a fan of the... <laughs> just listing Native American. Uh. Indeed, it frequently struggled in its conflicts uh. with the Native Americans. The legend of the last stand of Custer endures to this day. Somehow they managed to improve, though, in the Mexican War and then in the U.S. Civil War. The point being is that there were a series of very brutal conflicts, and yet it seems that the United States had its strategic mentality in mind, and that the United States Civil War was going to be fought so that the United States could achieve a more perfect democracy, and coincidentally it could also achieve a more centralized government. The Civil War was fought over fucking slavery. We've been over this. But let's think about that, because we're told that prior to the United States Civil War that the American states, such as Iowa, Georgia... They were really the representation. It's in the title of the United States. That, in other words, state identity or states' rights were what mattered to people. Well, perhaps... We're aware of federalism. We're aware. We are aware, sir. We're aware. We're, we're aware. It's the best way to look at that is in flags, and we're told that the United... Like, the, the balance of federal versus state power is a conversation that happens today, but, like, in the founding of the country, that was a big partisan issue, was how much power do the individual states have versus federal power? Like, that's... That was a huge part of it, to the point that one of the parties was literally called the Federalist Party, as opposed to the Democratic-Republicans. The United States needed to have a flag in 1777, and here we have George Washington with Betsy Ross approving the original design. But what exactly did the states have in the early period of the United States? So we would expect every single state in the United States to have a state flag, especially once they became a state. But you may be surprised to know that that's not the case. For example, we'll look at uh, Minnesota in 1893, the first Minnesota state flag. In 1893, the Minnesota delegation to the Chicago World's Fair held a contest under the auspices of the state legislature to design a Minnesota state flag. The flag was intended to serve as a promotional tool for the state at its exhibition pavilion in Chicago. Amelia Hyde, center of Minneapolis, submitted the winning entry. Profane Priestess says, why would America's various tribes and confederacies not have gone to war with the United States? We were murdering them to take their stuff. Of course they fought back. It's, I'm not a violent person, far from it, but they had a right to defend themselves. So we have a competition for our state flags, and I'm rather surprised to know that they didn't have a state flag for Minnesota. What about the Civil War? Well, when you look up here on the site, you're told that Minnesota's Civil War battle flags, in keeping with Union customs, several Minnesota regiment carried blue battle flags with a state seal in the center, including the first Minnesota, which fought at Gettysburg and endured great casualties, but certainly not because of General Hancock, and the second, fourth, and fifth Minnesota. Most other Minnesota battle flags, however, had the American Eagle at the center by federal regulations. Many of Minnesota's battle flags are today displayed in the Capitol Rotunda. Hmm. Well, that's Minnesota. Let's look at Iowa. Iowa was one of the primary states of the Union and sent nearly 10% of its population to fight in the Civil War, the war between the states. What's the origin of its flag? I'm trying to figure out what his whole vibe is even here. It's mostly him just going, isn't this weird? I assume he's thinking Tartaria. The vibe I'm getting is he thinks this was all orchestrated, and American history is entirely orchestrated by Tartaria. But, like, he's not saying it as much. I don't know. I have to do that hydrate, but I'm out of water, so I'm going to go grab some water real quick. Be right back. Canada also had a contest to pick our flag, and you picked the maple leaf. What were the other options? <laughs> Be right back.
<laughs> the others were the loon, the francophone, and the hockey puck. Should have gone with the hockey puck. <sighs> well, they didn't have their flag until 1921. What? Iowa did not have a state flag until 1921? I don't know why he finds that that weird. That's what official history says. There was a false flag that was apparently used by a tobacco company, but it wasn't the real official flag of Iowa. False flag on the bingo card. So let me get this straight. Iowa. I'll take that literally. One of the most. I'll do them dying with a link. <laughs> Alternate designs. Okay, let's take a look. Oh, they're all maple leaf. Was a maple leaf like a necessity? Jesus Christ. Oh, wow. The, the Union Jack with the arrows comes off as incredibly authoritarian to me. <laughs> like, that looks like if you were trying to make a flag for, like, Ing Sock. That's what I would do is that British flag with the arrows. That's so fucking yikes. <laughs> oh. Okay, I see why you picked the one you guys picked. That was You probably made the best choice, all things considered. Oh, that one's pretty good. I like the beaver one. Maybe you should have gone with the beaver. That one's okay too. For the record, I'm joking. I'm being snarky. I have no. I'm not. I'm not trying to be disrespectful to Canada or its flag. It's fine. I like the Canadian flag. I'm being flippant for humor. Just should clarify because the internet, you know, people don't necessarily know you're joking. How shall we say supportive states of the union? And yet, we're told that prior to the Civil War, states' rights and states' identity was so paramount. Didn't even have a state flag until the 1920s. They didn't even have one for the World's Fair. And we know that Iowa had some great displays in the Chicago World's Fair, but they didn't have a state flag. How would anybody know about Iowa? Let's look at one of the southern states or former states of the Confederacy and the flag of Georgia. And indeed, you'll find that Georgia didn't actually have a state flag or anything like it until 1861. This is very strange. Well, let's just look at a timeline of all... I don't think it's that strange. I feel like historically flags have existed for a lot of reasons, both practical and civic in nature. But a lot of the time it was like battles and war, right? Like people would be like, oh, we have a flag for this reason or another so that we can identify in very specific situations, right? U.S. state. Now it's a thing that you kind of expect, but more back in the day, I assume it was more a matter of practicality. Flags and... You might, or identity once you eventually have a state and more of a state identity. You might be surprised to notice that virtually all of the U.S. states did not have any kind of state flag until the 1860s, uh, which corresponded that. with the start of the Civil War. And in oh, look! Wow, again! Related to war. Indeed, you'll see that most of the states that did were the states that joined the Confederacy or seceded from the Union. Now, there are some exceptions, such as Oha or Hawaii and maybe a few others, New York, but of course, New York being the original port of entry to the United States and it being around since the 1600s, of course, it would have a flag. But for the most part, none of the states had any sort of state flag until the 1860s. This seems to be in contravention towards what we'd expect with the identity of the states in the United States. So what's the point behind all this? The point behind all this is that despite having the paramounts of symbolism, none of the states bothered to have state flags. The United States had to have its flag for the American Revolution, though, but the state supposedly had this great identity, but for the most part, it didn't develop until the 1860s. That seems to give us a very different perception than what we're taught about the identity of the American states. But what are your thoughts on this discrepancy that we found? So let's close this exploration by looking at the works of Erastus Salisbury Field, an American folk painter, and this is supposedly a colorized daguerreotype. Does this really look like any kind of picture to you, though? Very strange. It looks like an old daguerreotype, yeah. And this individual is considered an American folk painter, and he was primarily active from 1850 to 1870, although the exact datings of his works are quite interesting. What kind of picture does he give us of America? Well, when you look at some of his works, he has a very interesting style of realism mixed with some sort of aspect of idealism. Yeah, it's something. And you're probably asking, all right, why are we looking at an American folk painter? Because folk art is something that it's not necessarily a true reflection of what's actually going on. It's merely showing us exactly what we have in terms of myth. Indeed, we're told that he focused a lot of his works on biblical and classical paintings, such as the Ark depicted here. Now, if we go off the official account, then sure, we could easily believe that. But this individual also painted aspects of American history. 
And so could this give us the impression that the Ark of the Covenant was in the United States at some point in time? Wow, just based on this random person's picture, you're going to assume that the Ark of the Covenant, the mythical object of Jewish tradition holding the Ten Commandments, Moses' staff, and manna, was in the United States. Oh boy, great, 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 great. Now, I could simply be leaping to conclusions, and there may be no reality behind it, but it's quite an interesting body of work that this field provided us, or whatever his works was really representing, or were representing. This family portrait is rather interesting as well, and seeing some of the humanity in the images, and yet some of the idealism. Isn't it intriguing when we think of what our perceptions of the 1800s are really like? And how do we form our perceptions of the 1800s? Well, I hate to say it, but the reality is it's from television shows, it's from certain paintings, and we'll look at folk art such as this. And this is where we'll derive our understanding of history from, because this actually puts it in image. And as we're constantly told, oddly enough by the United States Department of Defense as well, we're all visual learners. And so what are these images what? really representing? Is this the idealized individual from the 1800s? And indeed, he even it's did It's a this random guy's painting! This interesting image that shows... Again, there's this, there's this teleological top-down, who's in charge and who's planning every single event. George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, and some of the great... This looks like a jib-jab video. Union generals, I say that with a little bit of sarcasm, from the United States Civil War, because while the military record of Ulysses S. Grant, who's depicted here, some of the other generals depicted on this painting don't exactly have the greatest reputation. Ah, uh, yes, of course, we have the old hand in the pocket. Why not? Very interesting representation, though, of Lincoln and Washington, and not typically how we're used to seeing them. Now, is this I feel like conspiracy sort of theorists or... who comment on the photos where they put their hand in their like po in their like, you know, shirt or jacket or whatever have never worn a jacket like that. Cause I have. You know what you want to immediately do? Stick your hand in it. Just feels comfortable. Or is this just some sort of idealized image? And who do we have over here to the right? Well, this is supposed to be General Ambrose Burnside on the far right. Why is it we I could tell by his facial hair. Always have this reference to Ambrose Burnside because Ham Fisto, thanks for following. His military record during the United States Civil War was anything but remotely close to successful. Indeed, one of the most bloody, horrific Union defeats in the Civil War, the Battle of Fredericksburg, was brought about by this individual. There's also other odd artwork that uh, Mr. Fields did, such as the Taj Mahal. Was there a Taj Mahal in the United States, or did he actually travel to India? Well, there's no real account of that. He could have seen a- he could have seen a picture! He could have seen other people's illustrations or read descriptions! This is close enough that he probably had seen other people's illustrations, but damn! Um, sick hat you got there? Thank you. I try. That, so why would he be doing an artistic rendering or look at the Taj Mahal? And then we look at some of his so-called biblical works, and yet we have another oddity with this, because is he really depicting biblical works? When you look closer at some of the detail behind this, though, there's nothing remotely biblical about this. This almost seems to give the impression of something a little bit more modern, or whatever was actually what going way? on in the 1800s. Could it be that this is reflecting a different view of what truly hey, transpired in the United States? Or again, is it just an ideal? Is it the fact that he really dabbled in different kinds of paintings and decided to do actual biblical representations and depictions and also of Roman times? This is supposedly the army of the Pharaoh marching off, although how would anybody have any idea what the army of the Pharaoh marching off? And of course you'll tell me, well, he was just using his imagination. Correct. Do you know how art works? Of course he was. It borrows from other, like, cultural signifiers, like certain things that might be associated at the time with Egypt or something might get thrown in as a visual indicator to the viewer, but, like, yes, you imagine things in your head. Like, I can't picture things, right? I have aphantasia, so I can't really picture things. But I also know that that's rare, and most people can. Like, what? Does he think it's impossible for people to imagine things? And speaking of his imagination, he did have a very unique painting called the... The part of my brain that's supposed to be able to visualize things is just constantly working to make worse and worse jokes as I get older. Monument to the American Republic. 
This has to be one of the most unique and creative paintings I've ever seen from the 1800s. Where did this inspiration come from? Is this an amalgamation of different architectural stylings and paintings that he saw? Probably, and then he put them together in his imagination. It's interesting. Or does this represent something that may have existed in the United States? And again, I know you'll be saying speculation, but... It's That's not even speculation. That's just bullshit. Rather odd that during a time frame when people were certainly not encouraged to use their imaginations and had to be very pragmatic and very hard workers because how else do you explain all that incredible infrastructure that was thrown up across the entire United States in under a hundred year period, then where was someone going off with their imagination being able to bring all this together? Or is it possible that this is a depiction of how something looked in the United States in the distant past? These very unique towers with all these columns. We're told that the artist was simply representing different folk art of America and showing American history. But why do they always call it the American Republic? And indeed, looking closer, you can see what's supposed to be historical events that are represented within the walls on the columns. And yet we also still see the Roman Greco architecture. Well, you Greco Roman. That's weird. Um, Exo Deadlock says, quick research on the Taj Mahal painting. This image of the Taj Mahal by Arastus uh, Salisbury Field, um, 1860 to 80. American native painting, oil paint on canvas. Field probably painted this image from a photograph or engraving in his studio at Plum Trees in Sunderland, Massachusetts. Hmm. So you can easily hand wave explain that. I always love when conspiracies can be debunked by literally like five minutes of research. Actual research, not whatever the fuck they call research. Way by saying this particular individual, this painter, he liked to depict naive sorry not native i apologize roman and greek origins in many of his paintings so or naive sorry naive naive it doesn't know. necessarily reflect what was going on either way not native united states but isn't it interesting we have such a conflicting account what are your thoughts on the american republic what's the real history thank you for joining me please like comment and subscribe Yeesh. that was unbearable Nope, I'm not just using random angles to make it all work. And here's a few examples as to why 30 degrees is significant. Not only is 30 degrees one of the fundamental foundations to the very basics of geometry, but also with how we divide up time. Here I have the seed of life that also creates the star of David that divides this circle up into 12 equal sections, kind of like the face of a clock. Hmm. This is also how they divide up the zodiac, but... Not even the art context means not formally trained. Oh, like outsider art. Okay. Angle in between each hour equals 30 degrees. Also, the northern wall of the Great Pyramid sits at 30 degrees from the equator of the planet. And if we were to draw a line around the planet at this 30 degrees, we would then find the great circle of ancient sites that wraps around a planet at a 30 degree angle from the equator. If we were to take the face of this clock and expand it so it's two meters in diameter, the length of the arc of one hour then equals an Egyptian royal cubit that when applied to a pendulum also gives us one second of time with each swing. Oh, that was a lot, okay, all right find out why so many people like Cliff High are talking about Chaga tea. It has the highest antioxidant ratio count of any food out there. Better than a Kai Berries. Way better. Also, for those of you who would like to learn more about CBD products, go to martinbrodellcbd.com. Type in, well, actually, all you got to do <clears throat> is send me an email if you want to to sell CBD products, I'll give you the name and the phone number of the person to help you get started. Shilling on the bingo card. There are, and, and take a look at all their products. To try to keep my throat clear is what I'm doing. So let's go ahead and, and also for those of you who would like to uh, give an opinion of a person or a politician or a corporation, go to communityreviews.org. It's a fantastic platform. There's a video in the upper right hand portion of the uh, site that tells you all about what Hi, uh, the founders are hoping for. Let's go ahead and start with Georgia 
versus Michigan in the Orange Bowl. And, um, and yes, they, uh, they won the game rather handily, 34, Georgia did, 34 to 11. So congratulations to the Georgia Bulldogs. They now this video is supposed to be about time travel, by the way. Move on to play Alabama. Well, here. In that area. Now, we're on the western slope, okay? We, we're we currently getting, we're up to like eight or nine inches of snow here. Right now. And it's still snowing. Over there, it's dry as a bone. High winds, 110 mile per hour winds and so forth. But... The thing is, though, is that we're not talking about, like, trees and, and stuff. We're talking about, like, flat plains. It's dry grass, granted, yes. But for a bulldozer, it's, it would be pretty easy for that relatively easy. It's not like, my guess is, this is the deep state at work. Deep state on the bingo card. Doing as much damage on the way out as what they can. So they still have some power here. Yeah, I have no idea who is going on about. That's disjointed. Okay, my friends, I'm going to show you something in a minute, which hopefully is going to start things over again. This is mythology. And there is a lot of it. This is not just a couple of little statements here and there. There is a ton of of mythology. Now, nobody's going to read through, through this book. You... Is he under the impression that that book contains all human mythology? Because it does not. And also, yes, people have read that book. People have read books. That's not even, like, that big of a book. Like, it's, you know, it's a book. But, like, yes, people have read that book, Roger. You can read that goddamn book. It's not that big of a book. You may come and get... This is the, uh... Why did you get that book if you weren't going to read it? Uh, the New LaRousse Encyclopedia of Mythology. All right, but it's, it's uh, pretty serious. Now, this is also mythology. Now, this is um, Richard Cavendish, Mythology and Illustrated Encyclopedia. Now, again, people aren't going to sit down and read something like this. Just sit down. I mean, it seems like it's a reference book, so you might use it for reference, but you could absolutely sit down and just read it if you wanted to. I don't read it. I don't think. I haven't read much of them. I'm telling you, that's just true. I, I pick up a little here, a little there, and then I research it, and I substantiate if there's anything to back it up. I don't just read through it and I don't know what you get out of that just reading through it because this stuff doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. I mean, it's mythology. There are stories that are told by various human cultures. They don't have to be quote unquote logical or whatever. Like they're, they're stories. They tell you maybe about the culture or the people who told those stories, but they don't need to make internal sense necessarily because yeah, it's mythology. Generity says someone called Truth um, wanting wanted about seeing shapes on Mars and cited Roger, and I immediately thought, oh, for fuck's sake, not this guy. <laughs> Until you can come up with the material evidence to support it. And that's what I do. Now, I have a friend. I'm going to show you what he does in a second. And um, I think we got to start the whole deal over again. Okay, my outstanding <laughs> friends, before I get started, I want to mention a friend of mine, Paul Amatucci. Here's the guy, Paul C. Amatucci. He's on Amazon, and he's writing the new library that is influenced by the research of Mud Fossil University. And these are just some of the books he's written so far. Yeah, I have some mythology books around here somewhere, too, Profane Priestess. I have a cool one that's, like, illustrated, that has, like, illustrations that are in the style of each culture the different myths are from, and it's really cool. All right, all these different books about mud fossils and particle theory and giants in history and dipole electronics, Velikovsky, the world's mud fossils. He's got Anunnaki books and... All of this stuff has been suppressed. Those are apparently his books. Who's going to read those, Roger? 
information that we haven't even had any, nobody has any idea about. And if you bring it up, you sort of get, a, you know, a little pushback. I might have it up here, actually. Give me one sec. Let me look for one second and see if I can find it. If not, I'll come back. I guess I'll have to look for it later. I'm not sure exactly where I put it, but I got like 300 books up here. <laughs> I used to have books up here, but then I changed it into a Blu-ray shelf, so my books have been sitting over there on a desk for <laughs> months because I got to go through them and put them somewhere. Another shelf or something. Anyway. So these are very, very simple starter books. And they're, as you can see, there's not a whole lot in them that, you know, but there's a bunch of pictures and there's some, you know, nice big wide print. You can make notes in here about all the different things. And, and then, then there's pages in the back for where you can put your notes and so forth. And uh, anyway, it's got to start somewhere. It's got to start somewhere. We need new books. We need new books. We need new education. So this is, and, and these are not expensive. They're very inexpensive books. Speaking now, of here's books a bunch I have of... right here, in case you didn't see it, someone sent me Mike Lindell's book and it has the greatest holographic cover I've ever seen in my fucking life. <laughs> this is genuinely just one of the best fucking covers. I love it. From Crack Addict to CEO... There we go. Get your get your David Banner Hulk shot in there. Dun dun dun. <laughs> uh. He's got here the giants, and he's got introduction to mud fossils, Anunnaki, Velikovsky, petrified giants, <clears throat> and then uh, the world is a mud fossil. Atlantis. This one here, I did back in 2015 now just so you understand i don't make any money on these books i don't think he's hardly making any money you look at this it's twelve dollars 99 cents and he's got colored pictures in here and all kinds of things so he's he's just doing it to try to get this information out there and that's all i'm doing it for too i'm not making any money this is entirely his project now <clears throat> secondly I'm going to work with Paul. Have fun, Profane Priestess. Happy birthday again, and I hope D&D is excellent. Talk to you later. Sometime down the road, next few months, and get a full one book. There will be all my research, chapter after chapter after chapter. Each chapter will relate to something like the mud fossils, the history, the gods, light research, you know the the things that are in space. I'm and gonna write the world's shittiest book and self-publish it on Amazon. Are gonna be old? I'm telling you, why not? These people write books. I could write a book. That should different. It wouldn't be a good book, but it would have words and even a cover. I bet. Uh, um, chapters, and they'll be just briefly touched on. <sighs> Enough, enough so that you got an idea of what we're gonna do. I really need to learn to read and write. And I am gonna have a video to support that. But I would recommend these coffee table books. They're, they're very simplistic. They're nothing that you're going to get a big, big understanding of. I have a very different idea of what a coffee table book is. Chat, I have really cool coffee table books, by the way. In case you ever come to my house, I have the coolest fucking books. Everything. I have Marvel art books. I have art books from, um, oh God, he's one of my favorite Marvel artists. Why do I, why am I blanking on his name? He did Marvels. He's the one that does the more realistic, photorealistic one. I have a book of his art that's just great. I have a book of some of the best EC comics horror stuff that's a huge, like, coffee table book. 
once. All sorts of random pop culture encyclopedias. Alex Ross, thank you. I love Alex Ross. He's incredible. I fucking love Marvels. It's one of my favorite Marvel uh, books. Not like an ongoing, but you know, like a one-off. But I guess they've done spin-offs, but you know what I mean. The original standalone Marvel's graphic novel. This is the school is going to be for, and this will eventually be one of the top universities in the world. There's no question. There's no truth anymore in these universities. They gloss over everything, and they say, you sell, tell you what to say, then you say it, and then we'll give you a nice good grade. But if you don't say what we tell you to say, we're going to fail you. We're going to keep your money. We'll tell everybody you're an idiot. <laughs> You need so, to demonstrate an understanding of the material, correct? That, that's, the, that's the education system we're in right now. And if you bring this stuff, which I have, to all the top universities in the world, zero will engage. So that's, Because you're a random internet person making absurd claims. For those who don't know, he's a mud fossil guy. So he finds rocks and stuff and thinks they were parts of giants. He thinks some caves were giant vaginas and that obelisks were giant penises it's a whole thing anyway i think i'm done for the day i'm tired <laughs> so thanks everyone for hanging out um tomorrow we'll probably be doing sovereign citizens he is the cavussy guy We'll be doing Sovereign Citizens tomorrow. Uh, Chili, we have another Chili update, so we will be covering that. Uh, if you're a fan of the Chili stuff, good news. Um, so, that's about it. Let me see who we're going to raid on Twitch. The Cavussy gave you nightmares? It's interesting. Is that some sort of subset of Vor? The Cavussy? Let's not get into it. Literally. <sighs> okay, let's get, I'll 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 send you to another tin foil channel. This channel uh just does like they literally just play like tin foil people. I don't think they actually do commentary unlike me. They're just a channel that just like collects and plays in a row a lot of conspiracy videos. Um but it's interesting. So here's a link or not a link. We're rating. You don't have a choice. Um if you're on YouTube, give the stream a like. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow. So thanks, everyone, for another great stream. See you then. Relax. Have a good night. You are loved and wonderful. Bye. Oh, love you, Mr. Blast. Didn't want to miss that.